It's rare these days to be at any one place. So, Julie, Especially thank when you. Especially she was only 50. 50? <laughs> I thought she was 39. Wow, you can't be 40. Uh, yeah, well. <laughs> Go ahead, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. All righty, I'm going to turn this over to uh, the city attorney so that she could please read and uh, confirm that we're meeting the requirements for our hybrid commission meeting. Thank you, Mayor. In accordance with the Governor's Executive Order 20-69 and the City Manager's Emergency Order Number 2020-03, no in-person public attendance will be permitted during this public meeting. This meeting is being broadcast live on the city's website and on YouTube. Information about ways to watch the meeting and provide public comment are posted on the city's website at cityofnorthport.com slash online meetings, posted on the bulletin board in City Hall, and attached to the agenda for this meeting. To provide public comment, you may submit a written comment via the form on the city's website at cityofnorthport.com slash public comment. The form becomes active at 9 a.m. the day before each meeting and will be deactivated at the end of public comment during the meeting. Public comment may also be made by leaving a voicemail message via telephone at 941-429-1032. Voicemail messages will be accepted the day before the meeting from 8 a.m. until 7 p.m. Required information is referenced on the online form and the outgoing voicemail messages. Comments meeting these requirements that are timely submitted will be accepted and included in the official record of the meeting. Any comment received that does not meet the public comment requirements will be rejected and not included in the official record of the meeting. Mayor, in my opinion, these measures satisfy all applicable legal requirements. Thank you very much, City Attorney. All righty, guys. How about an approval of the fire district uh, meeting so moved. agenda? Second. Motion on the floor to approve the agenda by Vice Mayor, seconded by Commissioner Hanks. We okay to take a... So far, so good? Commissioner Carousel? Okay, we'll just do voice vote. Um, all those in favor of approving the... Oh, it did? Oh, okay. Are we good, City Clerk? Okay. And that passed 5-0. to zero. All righty, so now we're going to move on to public comment for the fire district meeting. Is there any public comment, City Clerk? There is not, thank you. Um, city Manager Consent Agenda. Has any items been requested to be pulled from the Fire District Consent? Thank you. I'll go ahead and entertain a motion to approve Consent Agenda as presented. So moved. Second. On the floor by Vice Mayor to approve Consent Agenda. Seconded by Commissioner Carrison. Anything to that, anyone? No, ma'am. Seeing nothing, we'll go ahead and take the vote. And the Consent Agenda passed 5-0. to zero. Um, don't think there's any, but let's, for the record, is there any public comment? No, there's not. Thank you very much. At this time, it is now 4.04, .04 and this meeting is adjourned. I hope the next one goes that way. You want to refresh your computers, please, and then go back in? Might have to hit. Uh, We're going agendas. into road and drainage. Yeah. It's thinking. Mm -hmm. I think it's so odd how they all work differently or independently of each other. Server error. error. <laughs> error getting camera if you if you well it's not doing it. Loading. Last meeting I went out of that and it took me right into it.
That's what I just asked city manager, and he said that it's working system wide. Yeah, I don't know working. we should get emails. I've gotten multiple just sitting here. Well, good afternoon, everybody. It is 4.09, and I do call this road and drainage district meeting to order. It is Tuesday, June 23rd, and those present are Commissioner Emmerich, Commissioner Carasone, myself, Mayor McDowell, Com Vice Mayor Luke, Commissioner Hanks. We have City Clerk, City Attorney, City Manager, and Deputy Chief, I think, is back there. Um, in the meeting so uh, we do have a quorum we said the pledge of allegiance at the district meeting so at this time i'm going to go ahead and turn it over to the city attorney so she can read the hybrid meeting requirements um, due to covid thank you mayor in accordance with the governor's executive order 20-69 and the city manager's emergency order number 2020-03 no in-person public attendance will be permitted during this public meeting the meeting is being broadcast live on the city's website and on YouTube. Information about ways to watch and provide public comment are posted on the website at cityofnorthport.com slash online meetings. That's also posted on the bulletin board in City Hall and attached to the agenda for this meeting. To provide public comment, use the online public comment form on the city's website at cityofnorthport.com slash public comment. The form becomes active at 9 a.m. the day before the meeting and will be deactivated at the end of public comment during the meeting. Public comment may also be made by leaving a voicemail message via telephone at 941-429-1032. Those voicemail messages will be accepted the day before the meeting from 8 a.m. until 7 p.m. Required information is referenced on the online form and the outgoing voicemail message. Comments that meet those requirements and that are timely submitted will be accepted and included in the official record of the meeting. Any comment received that does not meet the public comment requirements will be rejected and will not be included in the official record of the meeting. Mayor, it's my opinion that these measures satisfy all applicable legal requirements. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, City Attorney. All righty, so at this time, we'll go ahead and uh, get the approval of the agenda, please. So moved. House Sorry. motion on the floor to approve the agenda made by Vice Mayor, seconded by Commissioner Hanks. We'll go ahead and do voice vote, please, as the motion maker, uh, Vice Mayor. Yes. Commissioner Hanks. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Emmerich. Yes. Commissioner Carrison. Yes. And I also am a yes, so that passed five to zero. City Clerk, do we have any general public comment for this item? No, no general public comment. Thank you very much. City, um, sorry, City Manager, how about some consent agenda items? Was anything asked to be pulled? There was the request for the, um, the build grant to be pulled, which is the first item on consent. Thank you very much. I'll take a motion to approve the remaining things on the consent, which is basically the minutes. So moved. Second. Motion on the floor to approve the consent agenda pulling item uh, regarding the grant um, that was made by Vice Mayor, seconded by Commissioner Emmer, um, Commissioner Hanks. Anything to that, folks? Uh, no, just want to make sure that um, item 20 2241 is the one that we're referring to. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Thank Thank Alrighty, Vice Mayor, your vote, please. Yes. Commissioner Hanks? Yes. Commissioner Emmerich? Yes. Commissioner Carrison? Yes. And I'm also a yes. So at this time, we'll go ahead and turn it over to the city manager regarding the grant. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is a build grant. The city has applied for this due to the fact that sometimes timing to apply for grants requires us not to be able to get in front of you all um, before we apply. but. The requirement is that we come in front of you all before it's accepted. We have not heard yet, um, but we are applying for a $25 million grant for, to help with the for expansion or widening of Price Boulevard. Um, but if you have any further questions, uh, the mayor, it was you that requested this be pulled, so we'll answer. we're here to answer. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, so this is a $25 million grant for Price Boulevard, and what I'm wondering is because Price Boulevard is not fully funded, how much time from the time that the grant, if we get approved, to the time that we have to use that money, um, whether it be for securing funding or actually construction? I'm going to ask Valerie to come. She's got much more detailed knowledge of this grant. She's our, our grant writer. As I say every time we call her up, 
you know, these are the types of opportunities, which is why we put this position in the budget. So if we can get $25 million to help, I think that will probably fund her project, her job for a year or two at least. Just, yeah. Until retirement. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Ms. Valerie. For Go ahead, the, please. For the record, uh, Valerie Volangowski, grant writer, city manager's office, um, we would have two years. So any um, outstanding funding requirements, um, land acquisition, those types of things from the time that we're notified of the board, we have two years to um, basically get everything in order and start construction. So when you're saying that it's two years to make sure we have the funding and stuff in order because of procurement, that usually takes six to nine months. Is that two year, when we get notification, does the clock start ticking and we have additional time for procurement to construction? Yes, we'll have additional time for procurement. So um, this grant requires some more stringent um, environmental reviews and some other things that need to happen. Um, and so you, when you receive the notification to get the grant, you have two years to get every, all of your matching funds, um, any of the environmental requirements, uh, those types of things in order. So, um, and then the construction clock starts with the procurement. So then we're proposing to start procurement at that two year mark. And then how much time from procurement to when actual construction starts? Uh, usually that is a four to six month process. Um, I think in the application I put that it would be four months to do, do the procurement. So we have, so we get notified that we, we got the grant. Right. You get two years to secure funding, so then you get approximately four more months yes. to so, actually start construction. Right, so after that two year period, um, you have another five years to complete everything. So you actually have um, a full five years to complete all construction and construction related items. So construction has to be completed within five years from the date of notification or date of funding? Date of um, seven years after the date, <laughs> seven years after the date that we're notified. Everything needs to be done within that seven years. So two years for all your planning, securing matching funds, um, rest of your land acquisition, the environmental review, and then another five years for construction. The reason why I'm asking all of this is because of the stormwater ponds. And I know that when you get grants, there's specific things that have to be fulfilled. We don't have all of our ponds. And if we get notified, I don't know, October 1st, that we got the grant, our clock starts ticking and two years does not seem like a very long time to get funding and to get the stormwater ponds when we don't have that many stormwater ponds. And I, that kind of concerns me, so then I have to ask, what is the penalty if we don't fulfill the obligations of the grants? Well, we don't get the funding because the city won't start it's a reimbursable grant, okay. so we don't spend it. You know, we won't get reimbursed for anything until we start spending money. I didn't. I wasn't aware it was a reimbursable grant. So, all right. Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions? I make a motion. Go ahead, please. Approve agenda item 20-2241 as second. Oh, sorry. I thought that's fine. Got a motion on the floor to approve the um, grant for um, as presented by Vice Mayor, seconded by Commissioner Carison. Anything, uh, Vice Mayor? Commissioner Carison. Nope. Thank you. All right, we'll go ahead and take voice vote. Uh, Vice Mayor? Yes. Commissioner Carison? Yes. Commissioner Emmerich? Yes. Commissioner Hanks? Yes. And I also am a yes, thank you. We'll go ahead and move on to the next item, which is, I believe, the discussion and, pop pop discussion and possible action regarding the Tropicare path and road construction. 
Um, so, City Manager, I'll go ahead and turn that over to you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this could be a lengthy conversation, so I'll just turn it over to Ms. Balea. This is a result of the budget meetings we had last week. Um, we were going to bring this to you all in July. Um, so that being said, we rushed this through to get to you today at your direction last week. So I ask for your tolerance if everything is not perfect on it. As we, we strive for that, but rushing compromises that. So that being said, I'll turn it over to Ms. Belia. Thank you. Thank you, City Manager. For the record, Juliana Belia, Public Works Director. Uh, this is a presentation on the Trop Tropicare Boulevard Shared Use Path Project. And in addition, we will also uh, be addressing the alternative for phasing, construction, and funding for uh, Tropic Care Boulevard reconstruction as well. Um, this is the location for the, uh, the multi-use path. Uh, it is between Ponce de Leon Boulevard and Toledo Blade Boulevard. Um, it is a shared use path, which incidentally, uh, Florida Department of Transportation um, is leaning toward shared use paths and multi-use paths as opposed to bike lanes. Uh, Florida is the number one uh, in, the, uh, in, this, in the United States for accidents with respect to bicycles. So they're kind of, kind of uh, getting away from the bike lanes and they're in full support of these shared use paths. So just wanted to mention that. Um, they're for bicyclists, pedestrians, inline skaters, equestrian, and non-motorized users. users. Uh, the trail composition, it's an eight foot wide path, asphalt pavement. Uh, concrete pavement will be constructed over the Mycatchee Creek Bridge. It's approximately five miles in length. Um, this is an example of a typical section. Um, the existing uh, roadway to remain, um, it's got an eight foot shared use path and there's a five foot uh, distance in between. And this is an example of the roadway, the trail, and the swale, and the right of way. Um, here's some, some additional information um, uh, as far as the typical section. You can see the users of the, of the, of the trail. Um, this is going to be a newly constructed uh, pedestrian bridge over the Mycatchee Creek and um, on Tropicare Boulevard. It will be 12 feet in width. In addition, we have two other waterways, the Cosmic Waterway and the Creighton Waterway. Uh, we'll be utilizing existing uh, box culvert uh, concrete, reinforced concrete pipes, as well as, as culvert pipes to construct the path over. So these particular areas, it's, it's not going to be necessary to construct a, a separate pedestrian bridge. Some of the design elements, of course, is the pedestrian bridge over the creek. Uh, and of course, the canal crossings that I referenced, use, utilizing the existing box culverts. Um, we'll also have a mid-block crossing 200 feet east of Reister Town Boulevard to connect to the nature trail along the creek. And you're going to have some meandering segments. Um, Jerry, hopefully I, hope I will make him proud. Chicanes, that's what they're called, at intersections uh, to improve the cr uh, crossing safety. Chicanes are curves or changes in the alignment added by design to slow the traffic for safety. Uh, the project schedule, uh, notice to proceed for the design, was on August of 2018. 15% plan submittal was November of 2018. 60% plan submittal, January 2019. Southwest Florida Water Management District and United States Army Corps of Engineers permits were received in May of 2020. And 100% design plan submittal, December 2019. Construction uh, start is going to depend on funding. And once we do start, construction time will be approximately 18 to 24 months. Um, and what I'm going to be talking about now is with uh, the direction of City Commission. Uh, during our uh, budget workshop uh, last week, they had asked for some, um, some different phasing uh, schedules and segments and so forth and costs. So that's what we're going to be discussing next. So uh, for the trail and pavement for phase one, pavement and sidewalk from Van Camp Street to Ponce de Leon. For the pavement reconstruction, it would be um, 978,854.91 and then 350,000 for the sidewalk. So a little over 1.3 million for, for that uh, option or example. 
Phase two, pavement and trail from Ponce de Leon Boulevard to Sumter Boulevard. A uh, little over 1.4 million for the pavement reconstruction and the sidewalk and trail, a uh, little over 1.3 million for a total of 2.7 million. Additional mobilization and maintenance of traffic between 200,000 and 300,000 uh, is, is gonna be standard for each phase. Uh, next, uh, we're, we're gonna kind of give you four different alternatives. Alternative one is a multi-use path as designed from Toledo Blade Boulevard to Ponce de Leon Boulevard, and that's 3.4 million. Alternative two, same as alternative one above, plus a six foot concrete sidewalk from Ponce de Leon to Van Camp Street, 3.8 million. Alternative three, replace the proposed eight foot multi-use trail with a six foot concrete sidewalk from Toledo Blade Boulevard to Ponce de Leon Boulevard, 3.1 million. And alternative four, construct the six foot uh, sidewalk concrete from Toledo Blade Boulevard to Van Camp Street, 3.5 million. Alternative one, the pavement reconstruction from Toledo Blade Boulevard to Van Camp Street, including the areas of full deck reclamation is 4.1 million, slightly over. Uh, this, is, this is an additional about $198,000 uh, difference than we had, uh, Mr. Traverso had originally calculated. Um, it's been a little bit of time, and uh, when you go back and look at everything, and especially in light of our experience with the uh, routine phase, uh, road maintenance phase we just had, with finding a lot of uh, problems with the, uh, the base, um, and, it, and of course, I'm gonna be honest with you, it's very standard. When an engineer does what's called an engineer probable cost estimate, he does that estimate, and he does. there's a lot that goes into that with the calculations. When you go back and you look at your quantities again and you review, and you look at the whole picture in total and kind of other information you've gathered, that price is probably gonna be different. And in this case, it, it is. It's not a whole lot of, of, of additional money, but that's just, as time passes, uh, even if it's a month, even if it's sometimes a week, the economy year we're in, we've got COVID, we've got a lot of people building, believe it or not. Um, so that's going to change your costs and your construction prices. He has changed his price, but the goal is to make sure that prior to going out for bid on a project, you're as close as possible to your cost. It's going gonna, it's gonna to result in having to come back later and ask for change orders or amendments to your contract. The second alternative, number two, is pavement reconstruction from Toledo Blade Boulevard to Sumter Boulevard, including the areas of full depth reclamation, 1.7 million. Alternative three, pavement reconstruction from Sumter Boulevard to Van Camp Street, including full, full depth reclamation areas, 2.3 million. Phase one pavement and trail sidewalk from Van Camp Street to Sumter, pavement reconstruction 2.3 million and 1.7 for the sidewalk and the trail. That total would be 4.1 million. Phase two pavement and trail from Sumter Boulevard to Toledo Blade Boulevard, pavement reconstruction 1.7 million, sidewalk and trail 1.6 million for a total for phase two of 3.4 million. Uh, and standard additional mobilization and MOT between 200 and 300,000. Um, phase one, pavement sidewalk from Van Camp to Sumter. Pavement reconstru reconstruction, 2.3 million. Sidewalk and trail, 1.6 million for a total of four, a little over 4 million. Phase two, pavement and trail from Sumter to Toledo Blade. Pavement reconstruction, 1.7 and sidewalk and trail, 1.5 for a total of 3.2 million. And your standard MOT and mobilization costs. Um, the cost comparison, trail plus uh, pavement construction from Van Camp to Sumter is your, uh, the 4.1. Uh, then, of course, your, your other comparison with your sidewalk and pavement from Van Camp to Sumter is a little over 4 million. Sumter to Toledo Blade, 3.4. Sumter to Toledo Blade, phase two, 3.2. Additional mobilization, as we discussed, um, 7.8 and additional mobilization for all those phases, 7.5. Um, and then from Van Camp to Toledo Blade, multi-use trail and sidewalk, 3.8, pavement reconstruction, 4.1 for a total of 7.9. Sidewalk and pavement from Van Camp to Toledo Blade, six foot concrete sidewalk with pavement reconstruction is 7.6.
Are there any questions? Before we go too much further. Yes, ma'am. Trail. What is the trail? What? That is the shared use path. I'm Thank sorry. You. He just used a different uh, verbiage in there. It's a shared use path. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and the sidewalk, is that six or eight foot? The sidewalk is six feet. Just because the, the definitions were kind of changed I, throughout I'm sorry. This yeah, the, ver the, the, the verbiage. Okay. The verbiage. All right. Thank sorry you for that. that. Yes, Clearing up on the verbiage. Yes, um, ma'am. Commissioner Carson. Mm. <clears throat> um, there's a Mayakahatchee Creek connection. Is that uh, on the kind of the northern side of Reistertown, or where, where exactly is that? I mean, is that, that's not on Trout Care, is it? East of Reister Town to connect the trail along the creek. Is that on the, which side is that? Yeah, that's where the uh, road heading north from uh, on Reister Town is alongside the, uh, Could you the say Mayakahatchee the name for Creek Park. I'm sorry. For the record, Ben Newman, Public Works. Um, Thank you. That, that mid-block crossing is to, it's for the road that runs along the west side of the Mayakahatchee Creek Park. So it's Is just another yes, crossing on Tropicare, though. Mm -hmm. It's a mid, yes, a mid-block crossing. Okay. As opposed to what other crossing? I no. mean, I don't understand As what the difference. It was just to facilitate is. pedestrians wanting to get to the park. Pedestrians wanting to get to the park. Okay. And so we would provide a designated mid-block crossing there for that purpose. Okay. Um. Do you want to hear public comment before we get into the meat and potatoes of our questions, Commissioner? Uh, it's up to you. It's up to you. I, I would say, yeah, public comment. And then, then we can then, get then focus then on, yeah. Okay. Does that sound all right, guys? Well, and I... I was kind of looking for some numbers that they may have to work out. Like, to me, I see that the construction for the rehab is one thing, the sidewalk is another. Yes, ma'am. And so I'm not sure if I got the real, it looks like Van Camp to Ponce is 350000 for the sidewalk, but Ponce to Sumter is what? And I know that I asked, and I'm pretty sure you sent it to me. I but did. I you want Ponce to Sumter? Ponce to Sumter for pavement reconstruction is 1.4. The sidewalk and the trail is 1.3 for a total of 2.7. 1.3. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Again, the sidewalk is one thing. The reconstruction is another. Yes, ma'am. We've separated so, them, the two. Okay. Thank yes, you. That's, mm -hmm. But that, get that clarified. doesn't really make sense to me unless you're talking about that 1.3 where it says sidewalk and trail from mm -hmm. Ponce, oh, Ponce to Sumter. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the other from Sumter down to Toledo Blade, you're adding another million and a half or so. Okay. Yes, yes, ma'am. Thank ma you. That's why I wanted it broken up. Yes, I'm trying but to. But that is out. talking about the six foot sidewalk? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, guys, let's hear some public comment, and then we'll get into our, our questions. Um, City Clerk, um, do we have public comment? Go ahead, please. Sorry in advance if I mispronounce any names. <laughs> the first one's from Anna Brofenchensko. Have you, City Commission, drove down on Chop Care Boulevard lately? Please do because I would want you to see how bad the road is. Pothole on top of another pothole, and all I can see just patches and patches where it simply doesn't work. You end up spending more money on manpower and reuse asphalt to patch it than to fix drainage and repave the road. I voted for each of you on election day, but I didn't see promises being kept like to improve infrastructure. Install me and we see how much traffic goes to traffic here daily. I would be surprised if it isn't close to Sumter Boulevard road number. Please drive here a lot. And yes, people need multi-path because my husband almost got hit twice by a car 
when he was running in the morning. I work from home and use a lot of internet, but it slows down as soon as people start coming home from work. We need Comcast here. We don't even have access to Bad Frontier service. My husband sent so much application to all internet providers, but they won't do anything until commissioners act. Consider future exit in Ponce de Leon Boulevard Bridge because it will lower damage to Tropicare Roadway substantially and give people access to their seven to eight churches on Biscayne. It's time to act on those issues. The next one is from Victoria Newman. Commissioner and City Manager, I want to reiterate the majority of the estate's residents' positions. It is a waste of $4 million of taxpayers' money on a multi-use bike path repaving of Tropicare Boulevard in the estates. We have been down this road before and I was in attendance at the last meeting where most of the estate's residents told you we do not want this nor the added taxes that will be required for all taxpayers at some point in time. Yes, Tropicare Boulevard needs to be repaved and a big bike lane is appropriate. Also with the state of our nation, economy, unemployment, business losses, COVID has put a hardship on all of us, including the city. We have already wasted three, four hundred thousands of dollars of taxpayers' money on the last proposal and now this. Commissioner, city manager, we want our voices to be heard in your vote. Work for us, not against us. Regards, Victoria Newman. This one's from Daniel Conovo-Shonk. I'm not sure how to say that name. This project is much needed for Tropicare Boulevard. Just drive, go ahead and drive there and you will see how much potholes on the road caused by heavy traffic and not proper drainage. Internet fiber is much needed there too. Years and years, pe people literally begging commissioners to help solve the problems of internet in that area. And so far the only people heard is promises, but not action. And this action is time for the city commissioners. Multipath is great too because of all the big roads of Northport like Sumter, Price, Biscayne. Has some sort of sidewalks and Tropicare is a big road with a lot of traffic going back and forth because all people who live over the bridge of Ponce de Leon on south side use that road. After 5, 6 p.m. try to go ahead and walk there. Good luck not getting hit by a vehicle. Tropicare Boulevard Road probably became one of the worst roads of Northport because it's poorly maintained by the city commissioners. Just take your car right now and drive to Sumter to Ponce de Leon. Good luck swirling around huge potholes and pay their own bill for the new, uh, new suspension. City has to do something about it and at this point on the agenda to open an exit on Ponce de Leon Bridge. Tropicara Boulevard Road is heavily used by construction vehicles and this is fine but the road is not in proper condition. People literally walk on the road and drivers going around potholes. Definitely not a great combination. We must act now before someone will sure sue the city for not using tax sellers to take care of our roadways and people. So yes. Valentina Konovolchuk. Tropicare Boulevard Road is just in horrible condition. Potholes all over. My husband had to replace my tire and vent rim because of it. I bet if one of the commissioners would live in the estates area, they would fix this road as soon as possible. People pay close to a million dollars or even over that for their homes here in the estates area and pay a lot of taxes. So why are, is our main road bad? I'm an elderly woman and we take walks. I take walks with my husband infrequently, but how can we walk on Tropicare Boulevard on grass? A multi-path is needed there because it's a park where people want to walk but can't because there is no sidewalk along Tropicare Boulevard. Internet is another issue. I work from home and use hotspot internet. To be honest, it is horrible to lease a million dollar house without access to normal Comcast like internet. The city commissioners is hurting the city by not acting on what the public needs. I like the estates area, but there's no proper infrastructure how else is the city going to attract people to therefore money for taxes? Got to take care of it. Ronaldo Villa Vincino. I'm Cuban and Tropicare Boulevard became like in Cuba. 
a disgrace to the city for inactivity on this issue. Potholes, potholes, and potholes entire, along entire road. Common sense, fix the entire road and drainage because I pay my taxes to you. Multipath is common sense too. People need it. A lot of people walk in a state's area. Oh yeah, don't forget about fiber internets. Leo from the ball shop. I had to replace the rim on my wife's car because she ran into a pothole on top of Care Boulevard. It needs to get fixed as soon as possible. Your patching method just doesn't work because it needs complete road work along the road. Please provide internet fiber where you will be doing the multi-path because people need both. I'm considering selling our million dollar house in the state area because of this issue above. I pay a lot of taxes, tax revenues to you and don't see payback in terms of doing basic infrastructure and care of the roadways. I'm sure other people are upset about who live in this area also. Please invest my money that I pay back into your community here in the estate. Ron Hooch, I am opposed to the bike path horse trail at this time. There are plenty of parks and trails available for biking, hiking, and horse riding already in the city. I believe the money could be better spent on something else. I'm sure there are other projects that need attention. Vladimir Bravinchuk, Dear City Commissioners. Thank you for all your hard work for our great North Fort family. Our family are residents in the estate areas, 15 houses in total, including all my family members. And we would like to give public comment about multi-use path, road and drainage work along Tropicare Boulevard. It is definitely much needed project because Tropicare Boulevard Road currently is in bad condition between Sumter Boulevard and Ponce de Leon Boulevard. I'm constantly reporting potholes along the road for the city to fix because road and drainage is not right on the, the specific road and it needed to be fixed because the city is only wasting its money and manpower every time people report potholes there. Multipath for bicycles, parents with kids or just anybody to take a walk or run is definitely much needed because cars <coughs> are usually flying on that road and there are no way for you to walk on the road to Myakahachi Creek Environmental Park. It's simply dangerous. We all know that almost all drivers holding phones in their hands while driving, it is reality in our age. I personally was almost hit twice by a vehicle in the morning when I was running. I know that the city plans to lay down internet cable fiber along Tropical Boulevard and then rent it out to a major cable company, which is even greater, which is even greater idea because during this pandemic, we clearly saw that the city has has to do something with internet availability in the estates area because the current provider frontier is really slow and not available in all the area in all the areas of the estate. And hotspot internet were extremely slow because everybody's kids were homeschooling. I reached out to all internet providers in the area and they said that they wouldn't be providing internet there because not enough people, not sufficient business model were in this area and it's only growing with good internet, even more people would, will move to our peaceful estates area. The city will only win-win when this, with this protest because you will get money out of the internet companies to rent. You cannot on top of the tax revenues from future residents in the area. We live in the 21st century and the internet availability is is basic human need, especially during this pandemic when all kids are homeschooling. Unfortunately, without city commissioners' help, big players in internet industry won't provide internet there without right initiative. I gather so much information about it since we started living here and we've talked to a lot of people in our area and people really needed this project to be approved and done as soon as possible. I can collect the signatures of almost all the residents as if I have to do yes vote on this project. Whoever is against this project really doesn't live in our area in most cases. I've checked out all people's addresses on the property appraiser who gave negative comments about it in the Northport Facebook group users and they don't even live in the estates area and don't know what our struggles are here. This project is definitely an investment into our own community. First Slavic Pentecostal Church. 
Greetings to our dear commissioners of Northport. God bless you. Thank you for all your hard work and everything you do for the city. All of our members appreciate you and your prayer for you, pray for you daily. We believe that it's time for to do some major repair on Tropicare Boulevard Roadway because it's getting old and a lot of potholes are visible on the roadway. It has been years since the last major repair done to this road. Also, our members note that there are a lot of cyclists and pedestrians on the road during Sundays and, and multi-use pathway for them would be a very good project to improve safely for residents of the estate area. Thank you for reading our public comment. God bless you. Laura De Stefanano. Dear Commissioners, you had a public meeting last year and over 100 people spoke out against this project. You are representatives of, of these residents who should heed their direction and stop this project by voting no. Build school bus shelters and bike racks and add a bike lane to the repaving project. But this multi-use pathway is not wanted. It should have been called the no-use path. Dr. Laura DiStefanano. Scott Coates. State residents did not ask for this project. The public works director did. She told me herself at a public meeting where this project was first presented by the planning consultants. Residents were not asked whether they wanted a multi-use path before a consultant was hired to design the project. Equestrians will, use the, will not use the path provided. Pavement is dangerous and slippery for horse with steel hooves most. The bicyclists do not want the path because they will be required by law to use the path. What bicyclists want is a long straight road with no stoplight. Most of these cyclists using Tropicare are from groups, groups of enthusiasts who ride together. They want a long, straight, uninterrupted route. That's why they come to the estates to ride in the first place. Ask them. State law requires bikeless to use a bicycle path where one is provided. It is the city commission's intent to direct the police department to enforce this law. It had better be, and the resulting complaints will rain down upon you. Alternative surfaces like crushed stone were not even considered over expensive pavement. A bike lane adjacent to Tropicare was not even considered as a stunning, less costly alternative that would have ser served the bikeless community much better than a bike path. This project was marked as a destination facility, yet no parking is provided anywhere in the plan. Locating the path along a state's drive would not only eliminate the cost associated with the streets crossing, it would eliminate the very expensive bridge addition over Mayaka Creek. This option was not even considered. Finally, before the commissioners sitting as the road and drainage district embarked on this disastrous project and hired a consultant, you could have mailed out a business reply survey to the estate's residents and asked for input. Instead, you mailed out a meeting notice where over 125 residents loudly voiced their objectives, one of the longest public meetings in the city's history, yet here we are, it, they are ignoring our voices. $4 million after a 41% increase in our road and drainage district taxes last year is obscene. You folks couldn't even find $125,000 for a swale mower without a two-hour discussion and you want to spend $4 million on a sidewalk. The state residents do not want this project. Please vote against this project and stop the bleeding now. City tax revenues will be falling over the next 12 to 36 months and this is a boutillage of absurd proportions. Scott Coates. That's all. Thank you, City Clerk. Thank you, Ms. Becky. Alrighty, guys. Um, I have questions when Vanessa's done. Um, Julie, do you Sorry. Julie, do you have how many actually attended that meeting? Do you remember? Or was there a sign-up sheet or... Wasn't there a sign-up sheet? Yes, there was, there was a, a sign-up sign sheet. sheet. There was a sign-up sheet. What was it? About 25 people, maybe, if that? It might have been. I this place say. was packed. The right? meeting where we had the residents here? Yes, it packed. Yes. Yes. This place was packed. It was we packed. Had it, was, it was packed. It we did. We did. Okay. Yeah, no, it was right. packed in here. See, when I got here, it didn't. Oh, but most of them left once they understood yes, what the project was. Mm -hmm. yes, That's right. Now no, I it remember. was packed. It was yeah, packed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and your crews were out there today patching 
Trap Care. Yes, ma'am. And um, I wonder if we, okay. So the Van Camp, and again, the reconstruction is one thing, completely different. It's actually listed differently on the on the capital improvement projects, correct? I mean, it's all, yes, it's completely what, different ballgame. What we tried to do here, Commissioner, is we tried to show, because uh, during the budget workshop, we were asked to show if doing it in certain segments to do them together, how the costs would all pan out, different segments along traffic care. Okay, um, our, so our goal for, from staff's perspective is the road is in very bad shape, is to get that reconstructed. Um, mm -hmm. if, if somehow, you know, we, we can fit in even a, some of the segment of the path, that's fine. <coughs> but that's why we have so many uh, choices here, so okay. many alternatives. Because so we just I'm... wanted to show the commission how the costs, how the costs would, you know, cost the county of doing both, even the segments how it would work out and what, what, it would, what the uh, total would be for each alternative. All right, that, that's kind of where I'm trying to get at. Okay. Um, so the reconstruction is funded, right? If you went all the way from Van Camp to Toledo, if or we, is it from Ponce to Toledo, it's funded? We're the little, reconstruction we're, we're, portion. We're, no, I understand. We're, we're a little bit shy. We're... Um, I thought we weren't. We we her. weren't. We weren't until, if, if as I said earlier, that we discussed at yeah. last week's budget workshops is adopted. It will be funded. Right now, right. Okay. the current project is short okay. until the budget is adopted for next year. <clears throat> but but then also, <laughs> which just that little yeah. bit when Jerry redid the calculations, when Mr. Right. Traverso redid the calculations, um, it's one hundred ninety six thousand one thirty eight short. A little bit because again, yes. again. And that's because, as I was saying earlier, when, when you start redoing things and recalculating and time passes, you look again at the economy, the prices currently. So I would rather ask for, if I can, mm. that extra money. We have already, as the city manager says, we have already transferred around all the different funds commission asked us to. So that's been done. And that's been done to facilitate both. Okay. And you know. So, oh, what, what do you meaning mean? the multi-use, we were asked to, you know, I think I laid it out. The reconstruction of the road as well as the multi-use path. Right. So, the 196 being short is the complete project or just the reconstruction? Just the reconstruction Thank of Tropic Care okay. Boulevard. Yes, ma'am. All right. Can I ask a question on that one too, Vanessa? Absolutely. The, I believe you call it a MUT between 200 and 300,000. Does that need to be added on to that nearly 200,000 that it's short? So are we actually looking at closer to half a million? We would take that, take that out of it. We would add that, right? Yes, ma'am, we would add it. We would add it. So we're about a half a million short for the repaving? Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, thank you. Well, wait a second. So this is all new. Wait a second. If we're going to do the entire length of the road construction, if we're going to do the road, why is there an MOT? Isn't that included with the with the price? No, MOT is usually separate, two to three hundred thousand. So we were short last week five hundred thousand, and then no. now well, and go ahead. now we're still short a hundred thousand five hundred thousand. Do you want to say something? Well, yeah, it's on the same thing if you don't mind. Well, I'd like to get an answer before you pose a question if you don't mind. It's about the MOT. Yeah. If we're doing just the road from Van Camp down to Toledo no. Blade, why is the it, it, MOT not included? Ex excuse me. Excuse me. I apologize. Monica just corrected me. She, she's correct. If we add in the multi-use path, we're going to have the additional MOT. My apologies. My apologies. I'm incorrect. So now we're still yeah. back to being $196,000 short yes, for just the road. Just the road. Yes, ma'am. We're not talking about the path at all. No, ma'am. Just the okay, road. Okay. That's yes, all we need is 196 for the road. Yeah, 196, 196, 138. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Okay, but, Thank you. But Thank you've you, already accounted for that use of surtax for that 196 short. No. I thought that's what that said. No, no the... That's what they would probably want. All right, so let's get yes. to Commissioner right. Emmerich's we, question on the MOT, yeah, unless I, it was already answered. It is what we would yeah. do, is account for it from surtax, but yes, it's, it's not done yet. 
Okay, but it was proposed that it the surtax would be we, used for the one ninety six shortfall. It will be proposed shortfall. at your next round of budget workshops. Thank you. Okay, go ahead on your MOT. Sorry, I'm not done. But because no, my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, was with the MOT that was if we started and stopped the project. If we went out and just did the road and then we came back and did the sidewalk, then we would have to pay the extra. Yes, sir. But if You're we're correct. Working concurrently with the road and the sidewalk there's still only one MOT and that would be included in the first proposal that was my understanding yes sir okay that's what I was trying to get at it was included but if we stopped correct and then we started again then we'd have to pay that price again so that's why it was trying to get bundled together that's all I want to clarify Thank well, you. can I add to your question then so if you do the sidewalk and the pavement you do all the pavement but you only have X amount of money to spend for the sidewalk, you do those concurrently, do you have to pay an MOT when we you're in the first MOT. round, we or would you project. have to do it in second phasing? We would have one MOT for if we combined it into one project. But what she's asking is if you phased it out, would you have to pay that MOT for each every phase? phase? Yes, yes mm -hmm. ma'am. Every phase, yes, ma'am. That's different when you do it every phase. But if you do the sidewalk together with the reconstruction, that would be one MOT. Okay. okay, so you can't do a partial of it in a phase one and it not have the MOT because that is concurrent. It's at the same time, but you're only doing a portion of it. No, when, when they leave and come back, you have to pay. When they, you're paying for them to come here with all their equipment and mobilize. The minute they leave and have to come back, even if it's a couple months or whatever, you're going to pay another MOT. Wouldn't you be paying that in the second phase? Yes, in the next phase. Yeah. You'll, you'll have a new MOT with each phase. Yeah. Phase one, I, you'll I, additional. I think I understand what you're saying. If you did the whole stretch and then did a third of the sidewalk, that's one MOT. Right. Then we go out and we get funding, and then we have to come back. The construction's done. Now you need a new MOT for phase two, phase three. Yes. Yes. Okay, it's still muddy waters to me because I thought I heard you don't have to pay for an <coughs> MOT if you do it concurrently. The but you're telling me project. that it has to, you're going to pay the first Let, MOT let's, no matter what. Right. Let's, okay. let's say we construct yeah. tropic, uh, reconstruct Tropic Care Boulevard from um, Toledo Blade to Van Camp. We do the whole thing. And let's say we opt to do, let's say, half of the multi-use path in, in, along with concurrently the road reconstruction. So that MOT for both, for that first phase of the multi-use plus the entire reconstruction would be one MOT. Let's say they come back next year to do the remainder <coughs> of the new MOT. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense to Thank, me then. So what if we did all of the construction for the entire trap care, because we know with surtax that would be funded. Mm -hmm. And then you did a phase from Ponce to Sumter. Which for your, I, just your multi-use trail? Just for that multi-use trail, because you're going to have to phase the multi-use trail in. I mean, it's obvious. Um, then that's all covered under one mm -hmm. MOT. No. Two. Well, no, you're doing the entire road. road. If you do both of them all yeah. together at once, yeah, yeah. One. it's one MOT. Okay, one, one contract, and then, one contract, one MOT. Right, but then a year later, you're going to come back and do the Sumter to Toledo only the multi-use path. That's another MOT. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so it MOT is affiliated is with everything. You bring okay. all your equipment in and your supplies. You pay for that. It has to do with the yeah. equipment. Right. Okay. Mobilizing. Okay. If you and then maintaining the traffic. Okay, guys, even one at a time, guys, one at a time, please. Okay. Even if you did everything out there that you wanted to in one price. swell swoop. Separate one MOT. See, that's the part that I wasn't hearing. I was hearing. Do it all at only one. You're still paying for it. So, okay. Commissioner Carazon, go ahead. Floor is still yours. Okay, so um, the reconstruction is essentially already budgeted for if we're going to have to use the shortfall of the surtax. Gotcha. Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, what about the Ponce to Sumter for the multi-use trail? Didn't we have money set aside for this trail? And um, I mean, how, how short are we on that is what I'm trying to get at. 
Is it all, there's nothing, no 1.5? No, we have, we have something. Okay. With all the, after it's said and done, with our transferring. I'm only talking about sidewalk, but yeah. Uh, well, I'm talking about multi-use, the, the shared use path only. Okay, thank we you. Didn't, we didn't Cause... really do anything yet with the sidewalk. Yeah, yeah. Well, that is a sidewalk, essentially. The exactly. Well, that's what we have to yeah. decide. So we have 1,775,284.52. That is after we have done all of our commission directed transferring around. Right, so you've got 1.7. 1.7, yes ma'am. Okay, ma so we have the money budgeted yes, to do a multi-use path from Correct. Ponce to Sumter as well as a total reconstruction of Tropicare Boulevard if we utilize the That little bit of uh, extra, yes ma'am. Okay, mm -hmm. yes, and then you can phase the Van Camp to Ponce or the Sumter to Toledo mm -hmm. later on. Yes, ma'am, we can do that. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right, that's what I wanted to get clear. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Commissioner Emmerich, did you have questions? I, I see your hand kind of going and kind well, of... Well, yeah, I did, but I know <laughs> Commissioner Luke had mentioned, too, so it doesn't matter to me who goes Thank first. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Go ahead, Vice Mayor. Um, to bring up what was just stated with Commissioner Carazone, you actually have enough money to go from Van Camp to Sumter with a sidewalk or the combination of sidewalk and multi-use, correct? I mean, of course, you're saving money if it's just the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. But you do yes, have, we have, the you do have 7. money to go from Van Camp to Sumter for a sidewalk. Oh, you you bring up a great question. I need clarification. That 350000 you said for Van Camp to Ponce, is that for a sidewalk or for the multi-use? Well, that MOT, the maintenance of No, no, no. no. The money you said it would cost for just the, the area of... Van Camp to Ponce. Six foot sidewalk. Oh, the six foot sidewalk. Concrete, I believe. Oh, excuse me. Yes, the three hundred fifty thousand. Yes, is a six foot yes, sidewalk. Yes, okay. Six foot Thank sidewalk. I, thanks for bringing that mm -hmm. up because I yep. wasn't sure. If I heard it right. Right. So, even though I lean toward sidewalk the whole way instead of multi-use, you mm -hmm. still have money to do both in a phased approach. But I do have to go back to this MOT, and I apologize. <laughs> um, if that MOT is because they bring their equipment out, mm -hmm. then you are three hundred thousand more short for the no. repavement. No, we correct me if I'm wrong, Ben. We've already calculated that into our original cost for each, for the reconstruction, and also from the Ponce. Um, the first phase for the uh, multi-use trail that's already been included if we go start switching around phases or you know the roadway making it smaller from so from ponce to from toledo blade to ponce the mot is in that cost All the right. whole reconstruction we, it's in the cost if we extend it from ponce to van camp mm -hmm. does that mean we have to pay a second MOT. Only if you do it at a, a, a separate time. But if we do it all at once. No, ma'am, you would don't not. have to, and that 300K or whatever is figured into that cost that we saw previously. That's correct. Okay, yes, so ma'am. So we are only lacking 200K. Yes, ma'am. That is correct. All right. Uh, to me, that's vitally important that that gets put there somehow. This has got to be done. Uh, so if we go with the six-foot sidewalk, does that change the width of the bridges or the bridges any at all? Because you're talking about 12 foot bridge and if you only have a six foot sidewalk, uh, what does that do? Probably for safety purposes, it would be better just to leave it as a 12 foot width for the pedestrian bridge and the same for your other crossings. Yeah, just for posted traffic. Yeah. Can, can you? In other words, she, she's asking. I understand oh, what go she's ahead. asking. You, I'm you, asking you why. If you've got a six-foot sidewalk and then you're going to double it to go over a bridge, I don't understand why. It's just <clears throat> for opposing traffic, say you have two bicyclists in opposite directions trying to cross at the same time. If you have a six-foot wide opening, they're not, they're not going to be able to cross at the same time. So for safety, for the issue. Saying. 
for safety sake that's why we make them wider at those crossings and i would suggest too it's a lot more cost effective if you're looking at expanding in the future too sure. are you would you be able to fish <clears throat> off of that bridge into the creek i do not believe we would want people fishing right. off the bridge <laughs> that's why. okay i'll go to the next question <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a couple of these have already been addressed. Uh, I will just make a, a couple of statements. Oh, um, I, have I realize question. that the estates um, wasn't planned or designed to have full infrastructure when it was put in. But an arterial road is supposed to have a sidewalk per the design of arterials, correct? Uh, this is a collector, collector street, but yes, ma'am, it should. It okay. Should. You're, you're correct. And by eliminating what was one of the citizens called a destination, if it swung from a path to a sidewalk so that the children are safe for school, the elderly are able to go down that road, collector road, um, that could be possible, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right, at this point, I'm gonna give up my time. Mr. Sure, Armrich. All right, um, I have probably just a few questions, but when we had talked in the budget, we had talked about the, the width of the sidewalk. Now, mm -hmm. I know there's they said it had to be five foot, and then it was, no, it's got to be six foot. Mm -hmm. um, why does it have to be six foot? Can you tell me why? Is that our code? Yeah. I thought that was our code. For the ULDC? Yeah. Oh, it is five. Right. You sh if it was along the back of a curb, if we had a curb and gutter, and it was along the back of the curb, then it would need to be six foot wide. Okay, but out here it can be down to five foot wide. Then. It can be, yes. Okay. okay, so that takes off another foot because we started out at eight foot. Yeah. Um, the other question I had was, and you brought this back as for, for the numbers on this, was we were going to go from an eight foot path down to a six foot path, and that was going to still be asphalt. When you came back, it's, now we're talking about a concrete sidewalk. Now, isn't the concrete material more expensive than the asphalt material? If we're going to run a sidewalk for miles, What's the difference in pricing between concrete and asphalt? Approximately, I'm not gonna have you come up to the penny on saying, oh, well, this is the difference. No, but approximately, there's a difference between materials and costs, I'm assuming. Well, yeah, and I'm not really sure. Of course, it's probably pretty difficult to pave, adequately pave a five foot wide asphalt strip. If it's wider, um, it's not, not so bad. Their paving machines can can pave to a certain width, but down to five feet, I don't believe a paving machine. I might okay. be wrong, but I... And, and that could be... And, the, and then when we cross driveways, uh, we want, want it to be concrete, regardless of if it's eight foot or uh, six foot. It should be, you know, they will be concrete crossing driveways. But other than that, you know, like an eight foot wide path could be asphalt. I believe it's effective or efficient for a contractor to pave an eight foot width, but I'm not so sure about a five foot width. And, 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 and I can understand that. Five, five foot so, but, and then uh, I believe somebody had mentioned before you're going from a path to a sidewalk. So are you going from eight foot down to the six foot then? Or, or are we just looking at doing, if we go sidewalk, I, well, if we're doing sidewalk, I'd like to have it consistent from one end to the other. I don't think yeah. we need to belly in, belly out, belly in throughout that whole process. So mm -hmm. I don't see where you got path to sidewalk. So if it's just definitions, let's be clear on what we're talking about. Because if we're doing a sidewalk, it's a sidewalk. Right. And then it's concrete. If we're doing a path, then it's eight foot wide and it's asphalt. Asphalt, yes, sir. So that, mm -hmm. that's a little confusing to me when I hear that. So well, that, those were the numbers I wanted. So if we can go down to five foot, I would like to know what a five foot sidewalk is going to be for those areas rather than a six, because I'm sure okay. you did your numbers at six. Hang on, hang on. And, and if you go down to a five, that's going to be cheaper. 
we brought up the five foot and they told us in the last meeting it was supposed to be six mm -hmm. foot because it was an arterial road. Right. And that's why I mentioned arterial road. It was then corrected to now be a connector which allows the five foot. So right, but that's, that's where the variations came in. Absolutely, but, I'm, I'm in but if we were allowed five foot, now we're looking at a totally different basket here with we're still giving the sidewalk out there for the people to get by and the children to get to their bus stops. That extra foot in five miles is a lot of money. So I'm trying to fulfill the need at the best best price. You're coming up with a great compromise. Yeah, and that, that's what I'm looking at. And that's, I mean, and then who knows, we might be able to get it all done at the same time, depending on the prices. You know, I'm just trying to find the final answer here. I guess that's all I got for now, unless I think of something else. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Um, before you go for round two, can I ask a couple questions, please? Yeah, I, mine was about the the design. Just I, it go was ahead. kind of a jump off to what these guys were saying, um, but the the design for the multi-use path, which is different than a sidewalk, was completed. Correct. Okay. Yes, ma'am. If we go to a sidewalk, will a new design need to be in place? And what's the financial implication of that? That's, I mean, that has to be added on to it. That's what my. Well, that would make a difference. Yeah. The storm drainage would be less of an impact yes. for a five foot wide. I'm t just talking about that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the design. The actual design of the sidewalk. Thank you. They would have to do some design, partic redesign, particularly at the uh, driveways where they're crossing driveways. And um, I mean, the plans would have to be revised to show a, a narrow, you know, five feet versus uh, eight feet. Uh, and our, the, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're killing me. The, plan, the plans would, <laughs> would have to be uh, revised to show the difference between, you know, the eight foot wide shared use path and the five foot wide sidewalk, and, you know, where it's crossing driveways. Um, okay. Culvert pipes, the storm drainage. And that's going to cost something, robust, correct? We would not have to have as, as no, I get a, that, but it, it's going to cost something, correct? Yes, to will. do the it redesign. Costs, the consultant will have to redesign. Yes. yes Thank you. Okay. Well, there'll and be, there'll be a cost a, to have that. have an approximate okay. cost. No. Do you? No, I don't. No, I do. I'm sorry. Okay. No. And okay. then, because you're taking out the multi-use path, will you then have to create a bicycle path? Well, you should. I mean, if you want I mean, to accommodate, if you put a, if you change it from eight feet, eight feet is the bare minimum for what's called a shared use or multi-use path. It can't get any less than that and, and be really a shared use path. So then you're going to run into the problem of if you have shared users, bicyclists and pedestrians on a five or even a six foot wide sidewalk, it's, they're gonna be, you know, if they're in opposite directions, uh, they're gonna have to, of course, be a little more prudent or careful when they're crossing each other. It's that ain't gonna happen. kind of a safety issue. Wider sidewalks attra typically attract more users. They're more I attractive to use because, you know, Families, couples, or whatever can walk on there. You can have your kids. So, you know, are you saying that a bicycle and... path is not required if we put a sidewalk there? No, it is not. It is not. In okay. our ULDC arterials, are to have both bike lanes, a minimum of five, I think it's five feet or four feet wide, and uh, sidewalks of eight feet wide, minimum with sidewalks on arterial roads. Of course, this, for our comprehensive plan, is classified as a collector road. It really is not. I thought it was an arterial. I thought okay. it was an arterial. Too. Yeah, I mean, it's boulevard. Well, you know, it certainly looks like it could be, but uh, in our comp plan, it is not. Is somebody from planning able to confirm that it is a collector or arterial? Yeah, because between plan, these yeah. two meetings, I'm hearing two different... Road and all kinds of different stuff. Yeah, we'll find out for you while you continue. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I just wanted I'm to kind of clarify that. I'm hoping he knows. <laughs> I hope I know too. Exactly. <laughs> huh? Well, the meeting it was Last an arterial time. meeting. Well, he it wasn't did. here, so. Well, I looked at the comp plan this morning just to make sure I knew what I was talking about. 
So I hope I, hope I do. Or you stayed at a Holiday Inn Express last night. One or the other. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Hanks, did you have any questions? No, you guys are doing good. Okay. <laughs> well, you've asked several questions that I, that I would have addressed, so you guys are doing all right. So my questions, uh, I'm going to jump back. I know y'all are talking about the, the path road, I mean the sidewalk, whatever, trail. Um, I want to go back to the road. Part of the reason that the road is failing is because of all the weight of the vehicles and the amount of vehicles that are using it, obviously. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that if we're resurfacing this road and we're improving the base and we're improving the drainage, are we improving the thickness so that the road doesn't fail again quicker? No, we, that's we Jerry's are. project. I really haven't got. I don't no, know. We, we are. We are. We take. We take. I would certainly think we are. Yes, we're taking out everything. You know, taking out the all the bad base, taking out all the old pavement, milling and filling it, and it will be in very good condition. Okay. So, so not only are we redoing it, we're upgrading it. Yes, ma'am. We are upgrading to it to withstand for a longer period of time. Mm -hmm the amount of traffic and the weight of the traffic because there's In more the weight on that yes, road than there there's is a lot of, on uh, price. Um, heavy equipment that drives on that, a lot of trucks. Yeah. No, you're absolutely correct. So we have to make sure that the weight is being addressed when we go out for bid on this road construction because if we're going to do it, let's do it right the first time and add for additional weight because there's not... It's. Build it like an arterial. <laughs> yeah, build it like it's an arterial. <laughs> well, honestly, can I ask a because you bring up a great point about the trucks. Mm -hmm. Why can't we make it a no truck because traffic? Businesses that are out there that Well, they don't need to be there. They're there by special uh, whatever, whatever. They should have been gone a long time ago, but we won't go there. Um, but, I mean, honestly, just make it a no through truck. Well, we, we did it to Cranberry. We allowed people to take trucks home to park. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're no parking. So they so Cranberry is a no through truck zone. Correct. So they go home and park. Why can't we do the same thing we've done they to Cranberry? They don't take semis home on Cranberry. They are allowed to on the estates because they have the acreage. Oh, I see what you're saying now. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Because I'm thinking. Now I get it because of the acreage. All right. Yeah. yeah all right. You so do that. you all are going to look at the weight um, stuff. Well, but yes, wait a minute. But yes, it, if it's a through truck, it's different than when you bring it home because in like in South Venice, there's no through truck, but you can go home and park it. That's not a through. Because you're not going through. <laughs> right. 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 Going in. Well, so. if I can, if I can mention a couple things. Uh, <laughs> number one. Uh, we have Toledo Blade, Sumter. Those are our main uh, through truck traffic routes. So mm -hmm. Tropicare Boulevard is to destination. It's not really intended to be a through traffic hmm. ru truck route. However, yeah. that being said, DOT has been having discussions with, I'm not sure about Ben, but definitely Mr. Traverso. Yeah, they sure. want to make uh, Price Boulevard uh, an alternative access route for when 75 is shut down for evacuation <coughs> and so forth. Sorry. Mr. Traverso has recommended Tropic Air instead. Oh, because, no. Well, a couple, <laughs> couple reasons. Because of the close proximity to 75 and the, two, and the interchanges. And the other reason is we will then be eligible for funding to maintain that road. Well, then so keep that was it enough, on price. Because we definitely would, don't want it on price. So that was, you know, obvious. Mm -hmm. Well, you yeah. just said you're eligible from, for funding if they mm -hmm. do once, it, right? Once that designation comes through. But they're looking at both of them, but he's trying to steer it toward. <coughs> no way. You think people Mayor, are upset over it this? It is a collector road. Look out. Collector. Thank collector. You. Okay. All right. How far along are we in the design plans of this multimodal path, trail, sidewalk <laughs> thing? Because it says that 100% designs were submitted in December. The, uh, our staff is in the final review of the 100% plans which have been completed by the engineering consultant. We will be finished with our review by the end of July of this year. So 
So at what point does commission take a look at those plans and say yes or no? Because if you guys are, are almost done approving those plans and that plan is for a multimodal, that plan is for an eight foot um, path and that plan is for a 12 foot bridge, mm -hmm. when does it come to us to say, okay, yes, you can do that or wait a minute, based on feedback that we're getting from the citizens, we want to change that. Because I know Price Boulevard I, I came at 40, oh, 60. God. Go ahead. Um, when we did have our neighborhood meeting, um, they had asked, the attendees had asked if we can have one more additional neighborhood meeting for more input. So we will have to do that um, first. Then we would bring it back to the commission because this is, this is um, kind of like a high profile project for the public. Normally, to be honest, we could go straight to um, the RFP process and then you'd see it at contract award at contract stage. But this is a little different because it's been it's been a little bit controversial and we're going to have to they've asked for the residents out there asked for more public input so we agreed to have another neighborhood meeting when the plans are all finalized then after that before we would go to award of contract we'd bring it to the commission to get their blessing now that being said in the midst of everything the commission during our budget workshop had asked that we look at all of these options so what we'll do now, um, depending on the direction of the commission, we may have to actually go back to redesign with the consultant, de depending on the commission's direction. But I remember, and I don't know the date, but I remember this commission saying, hey, we need after, it was shortly after the neighborhood meeting, hey, we yes, need more information. How much is it going to cost for a six foot or an eight foot, not a sidewalk, not a multimodal? And we gave a whole bunch of different things saying, hey, how much? And we have been waiting for that information, which I thought was going to be coming much sooner than it has. Mm -hmm. And then we had our budget this past week, which reiterated those exact same questions right. that we were still waiting for answers on that we're now doing today. Mm -hmm. I almost thought the road would be reconstructed by now. So... And that was the road. I'm talking past. Well, I think, I'm past. I think a couple things that had happened. Um, the first thing that happened is we had already paid a consultant, and I think we talked about this too, was allowing them to complete their design. And then that way the commission, that was one of the things, then the commission would take a look at that along with these other alternatives. Um, if I'm not mistaken, because we had already made a commitment, we already awarded the contract to them, and we already paid them you know, to do their work. So rather than stop them from doing that, I think, if I'm not mistaken, what we had agreed upon is to bring the completion of those plans back, and you're absolutely right, Mayor, to also bring these other alternatives which we're bringing to you today. That's why we were going to try to make it work with July, and that's when the, those plans would be done with our review, and then we could have these options to you. But you asked for them earlier because of the budget process, so we, we just did it that way. So... If we give you direction today, yes, ma'am, to do whatever size sidewalk mm -hmm. to, and I'm talking just multimodal, yes, from the plan, if, if we're going to phase it, if we're, mm -hmm. how, the width of it, if we give you exact direction. Will that help with your consultant's reconfiguration? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and I I always believe that it's easier to erase than to add. Right. Especially when it comes to plans because they've already got everything figured out. Now they all have to take away is four feet or five feet right. or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where is Swift Mud in all this? Is that part all done for the path? Yeah. Yes, we have our permit from Swift Mud. Of course, if we would reduce the impervious area by reducing the width of the sidewalk or shared use path, it would be much easier we would not really have to redesign the stormwater swales or drainage for that so if we reduce the path from the proposed eight foot down to either a six or a five and that'll be a future conversation yes ma'am will that then reduce the cost of the necessary stormwater well then they would have to do a redesign if, and the plans are all you may the, want plan, to just leave the plans that. are all done with the swale the swale reduce, widths and depths and, and yeah. so then There's they would so have to oh. out there probably would be better be if just keep it, it that yeah. way. okay yes, yeah. one of you can okay. talk at a time 
Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. The whole reason this road is failing is because of the drainage. It has nothing to do with the weight and the and the amount of, of truck traffic. Truck traffic on the northern end up from Toledo to Sumter, yes. But from Sumter to, to Van Camp, it is all drainage, I promise. Mm -hmm. I know. And I just, I hate to see us make a decision and with the redesign, it could wind up costing us more mm -hmm. than had we just gone with the design that exists. Mm -hmm. But we don't have those numbers, so it's really difficult to kind of figure that out. Because when we did the whole park and rec thing, didn't they say that the concrete was gonna be more than the asphalt or something mm -hmm. that didn't even make sense? And so I, I'm just- I don't You're know, getting to I, one of my other questions. Yeah, I just need some solid numbers. What, what we could do, if I may, is to um, procure the services to do the redesign, and we would get all that information. So we'd be know, we would know what we're dealing with, how much it would cost to redesign the project, what the asphalt versus concrete costs are. Um, then we would have a, you know, once we, once we have the contractor or the uh, engineering consultant, we'd have to, I'm sure, amend their contract, correct, to do this work. We'd have a better idea. We we get all that information from them, so that way we could present that to you. When we, you know, we'd have a better idea of what we're dealing with. All right. Um, going through your PowerPoint presentation, I, I want to bring some things up. This um, you have a that that right there, mid block crossing. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. I don't ever remember there being a trail crossing over Tropicare going from Myakkahatchee Environmental Park over to the south end of um, Tropicare along. I know uh, this isn't even near Reistertown. That's why I'm asking. This is, this is east of Reistertown. There, where's, where's, where is this connecting? Because if it's just connecting to a trail that is nine times out of ten underwater, wouldn't it be better to have it at Reistertown itself? It's not. It's I, east I've, of Reistertown. I've seen the horses go into that <coughs> going over to Myakkahatchee Creek. I've seen them cross there. Well, they can't go there now. It's all blocked off. I don't know who put the big old Yeah, there's a big old barricade there. Hmm. Yeah. There's barricades in both entrances where the horses used to enter. My horse has always jumped. <laughs> so is, it, is there a reason that it's going over a trail that pedestrians don't use versus at Reistertown? Stanton. Thank you, because I still don't get that. Monica's going to, apparently, she goes out there like there's a path up out in that area. She's going to try to pull up. Probably when they blocked off, right? <coughs> there's a little hiking trail. I, I know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if yeah. this is a pedestrian path <coughs> walk that pedestrians are going to use, <coughs> It's to the left. You got to pull. Mm -hmm. Where's Sumter? Oh, there's Sumter. This is Tropicare. It's the right. Right. Right mm -hmm. in here is the what? is the path. You can see it's a. You need to get closer to the mic mm -hmm. and state your name because we can barely hear you. Sorry, Monica Bramble, uh, Public Works. Can you zoom out just to chiggers? You want to go in or out? Out. So I want to see it overall to figure out where this is. Okay, there's Reister Town. So that's there's some dirt, but there's a path along here that that's bike, underwater. Bicycle, bicyclists, walkers, hikers, horses. But there's there's there. guardrails yeah. along there that nobody could cross over it anyways, unless you. Mm -hmm. No, there. It, um, you come out kind of right right in. Here. Not anymore. Not anymore. No. They literally have what. I don't posts know. that are this big every three, I mean, they're 
No, they're brand new. Right. I promise you. But they're down. They're down uh, more east of there. Mm. I live there. So. Okay. So <laughs> my question is, would it be more prudent to make the pedestrian crosswalk at Reistertown versus in the middle of a pathway? But then you gotta go to the yes, we sidewalks. Like there's no sidewalks on. But at least they're crossing over Tropicare onto other pavement instead of a ditch. And I get what you're saying. Yeah. I'm I'm looking for maximum use, and more people I think will cross at Reistertown than they will at that path. I don't know. I'm just asking the question. Well, you, it, don't, it is, you don't need a pedestrian path thing that you've got. That's an intersection. Right. That's what I'm looking at. So it, it's an intersection. They would be crossing at an intersection. You don't even need the fancy uh, cross section. That's why I was still, confused still to begin with. with. Yeah. It, yeah. The pet, yeah. You'd, you'd still probably want the warnings with the pedestrian crossings and probably the RRFB too. Because there's no stop on yeah. traffic. The what? Yeah. There's what? There's no stop stop uh, stop signs or yes, there's no stop signs stopping traffic on Trout no. Care there at the intersection. Mm. But you said you would want something there, but nobody knows what you said. Is that R R oh. You know how we put in at uh, Greenwood on Sumter okay. the flashing beacon? Okay. The, yeah, the yeah, the re the flashing beacon. So uh, we we would have to make a decision as to where where is the best location for that crosswalk. Mm -hmm. I'm leaning towards crossing on a street mm -hmm. as opposed to crossing on a trail that probably isn't going to be used as much if people are, are going to be using this more regularly. But that's just me. Um, going to your design elements with this meandering segments at cross intersections. The chicanes. Isn't that what you, what you were just talking about? No. Isn't that the chicken? No, not the chicken. The next, nope, down, 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 down. Down? Down, Mid right there. Block. Okay, so if we're going to make this a five or six foot sidewalk, mm -hmm. whether it be concrete or asphalt, that's to be determined, why do you have to do this fanciness here? Because what traffic are you slowing down? Pedestrians? Mm. <laughs> no, it's the traffic traffic. The reason, uh, and I actually discussed, I just talked about a little bit about it, but I discussed it with Jerry, and I asked the same question. It's it's to bring the attention to the motorist mm -hmm. to let them know you're going to have pedestrians or bicyclists crossing in that area. It's for safety. But I have to say, I'm with you. I looked at this, and I thought, how is that safe? Because it looks like they're coming out at you. Yeah, I like, unless maybe it's a mental thing, you see it coming out at you, and then you think, I got to How are you going to see them here versus on a sidewalk? I mean, I don't Well, know. whether it's a sidewalk or a shared use path or whatever, if it's out further away from the edge of pavement as it goes along the roadway, at the intersections where you have a stop sign, you want this, this to go and connect to the road on the you know on the opposite side of the stop bar, so that traffic has to stop at the stop bar before it gets into the pedestrian crossing. So it's a mess. Well, I don't think she's talking about that. One. I'm ta I, she's I talking see about this the width like twenty feet thing. wide. It's just to separate. Like we're just trying to make it a shared use path where where we're oh, trying we're not to doing a shared use accommodate path. Maybe. bicyclists as well as pedestrians. So just to give them some separation. When they're crossing a side street. Oh, I see what you're saying. It's a wider saying. landing pad. Yes. I see what yes. you're saying. Yes, that's a good way of it. Which, again, why do you even have to have that? Why do you why have not? to have that? I mean, this is Just adding eight. expense to a project that doesn't realistically happen. I, I, I don't oh, see it, that well, kind of does happen, traffic. but I don't see how it's, an, it's a benefit. I'm with you on that if, one. If it were a shared use path the way it was originally designed, mm -hmm. I understand that if you're breaking yeah. it down into a sidewalk, I don't. Yeah, then your sidewalk would just be coming five foot in, stop right. five foot going, you wouldn't have all that. Yeah, I can in. understand it moving it a little bit away from the road, you know, having it, but to make it this wide. No, I'm with you on that one. Price right. Boulevard is used way more, way, way more often, is that? Grammatically it's correct, so it close, works. but no. 
but you figure it out. You know, I, it's, I, I just. I, you know, I agree that Price Boulevard is utilized. The sidewalks are very much utilized, mm -hmm. but that's because they're there. Uh, number right. one, right, and the pedestrians are there, okay. but no, the sidewalks are there. Right. <laughs> but the bigger problem I have is honestly is between um, Sumter and Toledo. Uh, actually, I guess it's Sumter to Ponce would be. No, it would be okay. both sides. The the Sun Cruisers they utilize Tropicare as their path, and it is a big problem at 6 30 in the morning when you've got the buses stopping on one side the sun cruisers on another side and the width of that roadway talk about sun cruiser the riders the bicyclists the bicycle. yes okay. and so i that's why i'm just hesitant on the whole reduction of of a multi-use to a sidewalk we really need to figure out a way that you can have the kids walking on a sidewalk and the bicyclists somewhere because I'm telling you right now how anyone has not been killed on a bicycle is beyond me. I mean, we've had people die on this roadway, but the bicyclists, I'm shocked because they come like 50 of them. No joke. I know. I've seen it. Um, on, the only... Go ahead. On the connector you don't have to have the path length but that does not stop you from having the shared use signage so that it warns everybody that all of those bicyclists are out there because those road warriors are not going to go on a even a multi-use path they're going to be out on, on the street out on the road they're going to drive straight ahead that's a long that's stretch for them well. so they're not going to go on a shared use path anyhow mm -hmm. But I don't they're think not. they're the problems, though. It's when you have the 50 of them in a group and you've yeah. got semis coming one way and you're going the other and a kid walking in the grass the other way. I, no joke, it's a, it's a nightmare. And so now my concern is you're going to have those 50 cyclists sharing that sidewalk. That won't be on it. So they're, they're going to cause the on. same problems that we've had all along. Not going to be on the sidewalk or even a multi-use path. No, I think they've used a multi-use mm -hmm. path because they've viewed it, used it um, in other areas. Uh, Venice Avenue, I've seen them on. But. Um, the only other thing I have is if we're going to go down to a five or... Currently, the, the design is for an eight-foot multimodal yes, and then a 12-foot bridge crossing. So there's a four-foot difference. Mm -hmm. If you're going to go down to a five-foot sidewalk and then all of a sudden open up to a 12-foot bridge... I think if you keep it that four foot difference, I think we'll give you that extra space that you're looking for. You know, if you've got a five foot sidewalk, you got a nine foot bridge width. If you've got a six foot sidewalk, you got a 10 foot bridge. That will also help cut on some of the costs because you don't need a 12 foot bridge if you've got a five or six foot sidewalk. And I know it's to help people cross, but that extra footage, that four foot difference should be sufficient. If it's sufficient from an 8 to 12, it should be sufficient from a 6 to, to 10. I, I just need to get some help understanding that. So you're wanting to go down 4 feet on the 12 foot to an 8 foot on this pedestrian bridge? Whatever, whatever the sidewalk width is that we're talking about, mm -hmm. just add the 4 foot for the bridge, additional 4 foot for your bridge. I think okay. what she's saying is that instead of 12... To make it more... Yeah. You currently Reduce have it. an eight foot planned multimodal yeah. and then a 12 foot bridge on that multimodal. Mm -hmm. That's a difference of four feet. Mm -hmm. So keep that difference when you are going with reducing the, or the reducing the or changing it to a sidewalk and reducing the width of the, the sidewalk. I'm just asking. Okay. We, we will we will definitely look at it because definitely. that will also help cut down some of the cost involved. Right. Okay. Now. How wide are the sidewalks on San Mateo? Do you know? Eight feet? Right? My guess. Five feet. Five feet, five. thank you. How wide are the sidewalks on Cranberry? I think they're five feet to a point, and then I think they're widened up at the northern part to uh, 
eight by the feet. college? It's eight feet or 10 feet. Yeah. I thought it was eight. Okay, so how wide are the, I'm trying to think of other collector roads to get an understanding of how wide the sidewalks are on collector roads. Um, Salford is a collector, correct? How wide are those? Five feet. Five feet. Okay. So now we've got five our feet. five yeah. feet for, the for then, um, because it's a collector road. Right. All right. Well, that's just the ULDC minimum. Right. I understand minimum. I thought it was more than that, though. I really did. I thought it was more than that because that was the minimum. And when we were doing the design work for those sidewalks, we went to seven. I could have sworn. But hey, uh, what do I know? I'm getting old. <laughs> to that. Go ahead, Vice Mayor. Um, you could always, uh, if you took it down, if you had a five foot <coughs> sidewalk and a nine foot bridge. You got that four foot to play with. You could always fan the sidewalk out to mm -hmm. that nine. So you got two foot here, two mm -hmm. foot there, and it's span. And then the same way as you depart from the bridge, right. it decreases in size. You know, so that way somebody's not falling off. A, yeah, like a two, ten foot widening area coming and going. Like to the, the approach, bridge. and then the. Yeah, I think we're all departing. getting into some engineering stuff that none of us have a degree right. for. So I think I when they do the redesign, they'll figure that out. I don't out. see anybody else having questions. Um, the road resurfacing. I'm going back to that. <laughs> when, if we approve the budget, you have the money. Um, when do you expect construction to begin on Tropicare for that road resurfacing, drainage, base, all of that? When do you expect all of that to happen? I think we're close to being ready, if not ready, with the bid package to advertise. Oh my God. You still I got believe. to believe. I'm not, again, this is Jerry's, uh, Jerry's been I understand. On so I'm going to say it's going to have to be on the street, what, about 40? 45 days for everything. Days. Takes four 30 months. days, then time for processing with finance. So I would say within the next, we then we got to bring it to the commission for for award, contract award. And take so six probably, months. Oh, no, more than that, because August we're off. It's going to be a Christmas be present. No, it, not it's not going to be done until next year. Okay, hold on. Hold, can no, we'll, we'll get it started this year. I heard that start. before. Okay, so you No, this one's ready. Ready. So you expect construction procurement process has to still happen. Mm -hmm. We have to give our final blessing on the contract. Yes, ma'am. And then you can start construction basically immediately. Notice so proceed. Yes, so November, December? Definitely. Okay. How long is construction going to take? Because it's going from Van Camp all the way to Toledo Blade, correct? <laughs> oh, yep. uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Van Camp to Toledo yeah. Blade. 24 months. Easy. Easy. Let them oh, answer. We the full <laughs> and all that. I, I'm going to have. I'm going to have to check, Mayor. I'm going to have to check because Jerry and I had this conversation. I want to say nine to twelve months, because you have the, what's going to take the time is the, the full depth reclamation, and okay. the base repairs and the installation of the pipes, the new pipes, and also we have the dark fiber component. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say at least a year. And do the drainage component too? That's what I say. The pipes, the drainage. Yes, ma'am. That's all in there. All right. So now here's one more thing. I will check that and confirm it though. COVID, are all of these necessary parts for drainage, the road materials, all of that stuff, is this readily available, or is it quote unquote like I'm back order? I doubt that COVID uh, had any or much of an effect, if any, on the materials. Well, with used. all the construction that everybody keeps saying has been happening because of COVID. But then again, I think because some of the construction's been delayed as well because of okay. COVID. So, so I, I just, I just, I'm trying yeah. to get a big painted picture instead of, well, guess what? <laughs> right. Well, all right. We we can, we will we will check that. We will check that. I check that. Alrighty, guys. So let's let's get some consensuses or directions. Let's give them something to work with so that they can come back with some concrete answers. Let's make it nice and clear and concise yeah. for the city clerk. Uh, move to uh, approve the reconstruction 
reconstruction of the entire roadway of Tropicare from Van Camp to Toledo Blade immediately. I'll second. I want to separate them out so that. Yeah, I appreciate that. All right, so we have a motion on the floor to approve the reconstruction of the roadway Tropicare from Van Camp to Toledo Blade. Do we? So reconstruction, including the base and drainage. Oh yeah, oh okay. yeah. Well, they right. yeah. I just that's to, part of their design. So that motion was made by Commissioner Carrison, seconded by myself. Anything to that, Commissioner Carrison? Uh, I rather just plead the fifth on this one. Okay, and I'll, I'll I'm done. Go ahead, Vice Mayor. Does that motion include the remaining financing of close to two? That's what we'll have to do in our second road of reading of. The, when we talk about the budget, the city yeah. manager said. If, so basically, if you all approve the motion as stated, um, we will address the budget issue with July's bud budget workshop, and then you'll adopt the budget in October. We'll get the procurement side working on it as is, um, so that it's all working in tandem, to also to avoid bringing you all a budget amendment. But if you're sending it out to procurement as is, that means it's based on the plans that the consultant already has. But what if we change? Well, if you oh, change that's them, then the, all bets are off. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm confusing it with the path. My bad. My bad. All right. So we have a motion on the floor for the reconstruction of the roadway from Van Camp to Toledo Blade. Um, anybody else have anything to I'd add? I'd like to, to add an amendment. Go ahead. To allow the. Um, the balance that's needed for that reconstruction to come out of surtax. Second. Does that help? Not needed, but yeah, that's fine. I wasn't sure. We're going to do it when anyway. you said I was a little, okay. I got an amendment on the floor to allow for the balance of funding needed to come from surtax, sur and that's from Commissioner Carousel seconded by Vice Mayor. Anything to that, Commissioner Carousel? No, I just I, saw the goofy look that he was giving me, and I thought maybe it was something we needed to add. Just, but just put it in there. That's just, just his look, though. Vice Mayor. I just feel better with this being <laughs> amended to this. Fantastic. Okay, so we're going to vote on the amendment. Voice vote. Um, Commissioner Carison is a motioner. I uh, yeah. Uh, Vice Mayor. Yes. Commissioner <clears throat> Emmerich. Yes. Commissioner Hanks. Yes. And I'm um, a yes, that amendment passes five to zero. Um, so bit back to the main motion as amended. Anything else to that? Seeing none, um, motion maker was Commissioner Carison. Go ahead, please, your vote. Yes. Seconder was me. I'm a yes. Uh, Vice Mayor? Yes. Commissioner Hanks? Yes. And Commissioner Emmerich? Yes. Okay, so there's your motion on the road. Now, as now far as this multi-use path, if we go out for redesign and we reduce it to the five foot sidewalk, is that going to cause a holdup in the reconstruction? No, ma'am. Okay. No, ma what, what we're going to need to do, to be quite honest, we're going to have to run these as two separate projects because we're going to be nowhere near one another. So that's another MO, whatever. Yeah, yeah but it's it may not be. because we may be able to get it started about the time they're finishing up this roadway. Okay. In my opinion, it's going to take a year. Mm -hmm. They were always supposed to be. Well, in my opinion, it's the drainage that needs to be looked at when you're doing one with the other. You need to take into consideration as you're doing the road that you're going to be doing a sidewalk. So, well, looking at that, that to me is yeah, is the thing that just yeah. needs the attention. Yes, no, ma'am. Well, and that drainage is probably a higher cost of anything than yes, because it is a big issue. Okay, so um, I will move to approve a sidewalk being built from Van Camp to Toledo Blade at a five foot width, removing the mid block crossing and reducing the bridge width as necessary. Is that clear? 
I tried to get everything. Perhaps pedestrian said. bridge with. Um, reduce the pedestrian bridge, right? Thank you. Bridges, right? Just Isn't one. There? Okay. Mm -hmm. Got a motion on the floor by uh, Commissioner Carrison. Do I hear a second? Hearing none, I'll second. Vice Man, uh, Commissioner Carrison, anything to that? Well, I thought that that's what everybody was leaning towards was a five foot sidewalk and, you know, the reduction in the pedestrian bridge and taking out that, that mid block crossing. Me personally, I'd like to see the multi use path. I really would because I think. That's the safest, best bet. We already have the design, but I fear that we don't have the support up here for it. Um, I know the support exists out there because it's a big problem with, like I said, the bicyclists, the, the, the kids, even adults. There's people that will be walking down Tropicare with, with um, what do you call them? The baby baskets, uh, strollers, strollers in the grass, and the water is up to here. Like, I, so, anyways, I just, I personally think that that multimodal pathway is the smartest, safest way. Um, and if it was up to me, I would absolutely go forward with that and possibly phase it from from Ponce to Sumter, Sumter to Toledo, and then a sidewalk from Van Camp to Ponce. That's what I would do. But it doesn't sound from the conversation I'm gathering that we could get a majority vote on that. So that's why I had it go down to the five foot. Is there anything else as the motion maker? The seconder was vice mayor. It was you. Oh, it was me, that's right. <laughs> Um, as a seconder, um, I am not in favor of the multimodal because it's a collector road. And our collector roads do not have multimodals on them. Um, so I think that this is also a fair compromise for the citizens that are against the multimodals. Mm -hmm. And it is also mm -hmm. getting a sidewalk out there because our collector roads should have sidewalks on them. That's why they're collector roads. Right. So that's why I went ahead and seconded it. Um, it's it's putting in the infrastructure in the areas that still need it to continue building our city to the standards that we have. Um, Commissioner Emmerich, I think you had your hand up. Yeah, the where the motion is is that we're already making that decision to go ahead and make it a five foot sidewalk. That's not what I'm gearing at right now. I I wanted the prices to come back. We don't know if the five foot sidewalk is going to be cheaper than the eight foot. I would like to compare the two of them before I make that decision. Because we could have a design right now that's cheaper than putting concrete down. I don't know. That's the information I wanted moving forward. We're looking at asphalt being what a third of the cost cheaper, give or take. I don't know. You know, that's exactly that could make up the difference of the cost of a five foot. Right, and you, you may know, be able to still stay with the eight foot and the, and the, the money. Both. That's what I want to see. I want to see the cost on both. That's what I'm not getting. So, I mean, you want to approve a five foot. I'm going to deny it right now because I want information. You know what? I mean, I and I get that. It's just that, dear God. Can I let how? others speak first? Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Vice Mayor. Uh, the reason I won't support it, and I would rather support what Commissioner Emmerich is saying, getting stats back, information back. But the motion said all the way to Toledo Blade, and we don't have that much money. Yeah. And, and so to me, it's a phase project going from Van Camp to Sumter. And then in the future, you would go from Sumter to Toledo Blade. So I cannot agree with the motion because the money's not there. And we're already using a, enough money as is from other projects, from surtax, it's going to be a larger increase coming out of that now with the budget. So I cannot say do the entire project when it's unfunded. I, I can't do that. Okay, I'm going to pull my motion then. Well, hold on. Did you want to speak? Yeah. I'm going to pull my motion because everyone has made a very clear argument and uh, it was a long shot, really. Uh, Let's 
started the conversation, and that's yeah. what we needed. So because I appreciate that. I, again, I, I believe the design that's been already completed is the smartest way to do it, safety-wise. Um, and I am very concerned that a redesign is going to cost us just as much as if we saved in the five foot. But to be honest with you, the unbelievable slowness of anything that occurs in this government is annoying. <laughs> and to have us think that that road was going to be reconstructed by this year, only to find out it's not, and we've got probably another year, I, that is a real heartbreaker to those of us who are losing their axles on a daily basis. Uh, I can only imagine how long this is going to take, honest let's, to God. Let's get a new motion on the floor. So if and you're we'll looking for information, on. I want an absolute defined date, and it better be stuck to. I would like to see if we can get a consensus, not necessarily a motion, a consensus for information uh, comparing a five foot sidewalk compared to that eight foot multi mobile, moving the mid block crossing to Royster Town or some form of mid block crossing there, and then decreasing the pedestrian bridge to nine foot. That way we get those facts and figures. Uh, see if we've got enough money for either of them and go from there. And maybe include the price of the redesign as a factor as well yes. in that whole. That would have to be included. If there's a redesign cost, what that redesign would be. Well, that, that would be a lot better information wise. And I would like to see the difference in cost between concrete and asphalt. I think city manager has some. Yeah, I well, believe that. So that the first question that I have is, do we even have the expertise? Because keep in mind, the information we've gotten for you on this, we didn't do. We hired exactly. somebody to do. So if you're asking for information that I don't know that we have the expertise in-house to give you, and but certainly not to give you in an area, because changing a bridge size is an engineering issue. Mm -hmm. um, coming up with these costs, I can guarantee you whatever we come up with will not be correct <laughs> because the prices will change by the time we get to construction. Amen to that. Um, I don't know if we have the expertise in-house to do that, which then leads us to, do you want to redesign this or not? Do you want us to put out to get in the information you're asking for? Um, the first question I'll let Julie answer is, do we have the expertise to give you ans the answers to those questions you just asked? Can I ask a question? Sure. <laughs> no, based on what you're saying, we already have the design. We'll call it 90% design for the multimodal path. Mm -hmm. That's that we have, correct? We have 100. Okay, so we have 100% yes, design. That's in our back pocket. Mm -hmm. So if we go and tell them, hey, let's let's see if we can get the eraser out, make it five foot based on this stuff that um, Vice Mayor was asking about. I. I cannot see a redesign, even if it's coming back at 40% plans with an estimate of cost, being that expensive. Well, you have to redesign the entire bridge because the size of the bridge determines its joint structure. It's, I understand it's, that. So, I mean, that's a complete engineering redesign just to take a couple of feet off of it. So, I, I, I would see it costing some money. I think, I think to answer... Hold on. Oh, so I'm sorry, Just keep sorry. in mind, yeah. we have a contract that we put out to have this done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is going to require a contract amendment. So back to your why does everything take so darn long around here? Because it's a contract amendment. I can't do it. You all have to approve it. We have to get it, to take it through procurement, get the amendment done. It has to go to legal to get reviewed. Then it will come to you all to approve. And then we will, then we'll know how much it costs. And to be honest with you, it's nice to sit here and say that we can't imagine that it would cost, but it's somebody else's. It gets to decide how much they're willing to charge for it. I personally think we just need to decide whether or not we want to go through with it or not. And that's where we're at here. Or phase it. I mean, well, yeah, you can phase I, it. I don't see why we can't do... Thousand to every phase. Time. I don't see why we can't do Van Camp to Sumter and find out how much that's going to cost and where we can find that money. And that'd be phase one. Commissioner Hanks. That's exactly what I'm saying. I'm, I mean, we're at a place where we just need to decide 
Do we want to do it or not do it? I think to do anything else is not only to take time, it's going to take exponentially more finances to do so. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think if, uh, you know, if we phase it, we have to understand it's going to add money to phase it. But that being said, we're also looking at where we stand today. You know, there's more, you know, there's more to this than just having a place to walk. You know, there is some infrastructure, you know, things that we're talking about doing this entire thing. Um, you know, and it does save some of the MOT. So um, I think that's the decision we have to make. Do we want to go, go through with what was uh, presented in the design, or do we just want to say scrap the entire multimodal and sidewalk? That's where we're at right, right now. Um, this is, this is uh, again, this is what we do consistently over years and years and years. The, Commissioner Emmerich. Didn't you give us the numbers for that multimodal path for in phases and your phase started from Van Camp to Ponce and then Ponce to Sumper, Sumpner and this? Isn't that all in your slide presentation that we just I can't pull it at? up because my thing's yes, No, sir. I know we can't pull it up, but aren't those, those are the so. numbers for as we are right now. Yes, sir. And so we, can, we have that educated right. numbers on what's there right now and the phasing process. If you want to review that and go over that, what I'm saying we have it's it. 1.5 million for from Ponce to Sumter for the multimodal, and then to have a six foot sidewalk from Van Camp to Ponce would be 350 thousand. Correct? I'm not seeing those numbers. I'm sorry. Where are you? Because they were part of the questions I asked earlier. Yeah, that's on the slide presentation. Now. On the slide. At the 350, I didn't think. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is three hundred and fifty thousand. That's the beginning. Actually, the sidewalk and trail combination from Van Camp to Sumter is one million seven hundred seventy-two six eighteen point mm -hmm. twenty-eight, and we have one million seven hundred seventy-five and some change. So there's we have enough money to do in a phased approach from Van Camp to my understanding, Van Camp to Sumter. Ponce is the sidewalk, a six foot sidewalk, and then from Sum or from Ponce to Sumter is the trail, is what I was told by staff. Correct. And the, and the money's currently there. The so money's could, there for that. We could actually do the road and that currently with the money that we have then. Is that correct? I'm asking what I yes. heard earlier. Yep. Unless do we have to pay the two to three hundred thousand for the MOT? No, that's if, already included in the original cost. For the pavement. Well that's and the original cost. And for the first cost. phase the of first your phase. multimodal. Good God. All right. All right so I'll move I I'll move to I'm looking at you. Um, I'll move to proceed with the current design. In addition, a six foot sidewalk from Van Camp to Ponce, as well as Ponce to Sumter, the multimodal path, or multi use path, whatever you want to call it, and be that phase one, and then phase two later to be determined. Does that work for everyone? So we're using the current design. It's going to go from Ponce to Sumter with the current design, adding a sidewalk from Van Camp to Ponce, because that was not in the design, right? And that would be phase one to run consecutively with the reconstruction. Got a motion on the floor by uh, Commissioner Carison is stated. Anybody seconding that? I'll second that. <laughs> second by Commissioner about, right? Hanks. That's what we're talking about. I thought so. All right, so I got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Carison, seconded by Commissioner Hanks. Commissioner Carison? I, I'm just trying to get something done. <laughs> All right, Commissioner Hanks? No, I, I mean, I think this is exactly what we're here to do, and uh, a decision has to be made. We can't keep not just kicking the can, but twisting it up and cutting it up and scrape, scraping the paint off of it. Otherwise, nothing gets done anywhere. We ask, uh, you know, staff to, to bring us these things. They, they do it. Then this Change is what mind. we, we do. And so then it takes four years to do something to even get a decision made. So I think this is exactly what 
decision needs to be made. There's a whole lot more to this than just a sidewalk, a lot more to this than just repayment. There's infrastructure, you know, that is going to go into this entire project. The infrastructure, the the uh, the internet conduit, all those That's things. The room. Well, yeah, but it's all together. It's all part of the MOT, right? So so we already approved of the road. The road. And it's all this stuff together. So you know, you know, it includes everything. So I, I appreciate uh, uh, the mayor bringing it back to a place that was at, that was reasonable, even though I know she was trying to be reasonable. Or not the mayor. Uh, <laughs> Anybody else want to weigh in on this? The only thing, the only thing I have a problem with is the cost and the fact that we're phasing it. You have two and a half miles of people that are going to wait indefinitely for a sidewalk of any type. Um, we don't know when that's going to happen. And I'm sorry, that's, that's not fair and equitable to all of the residents out in the estates that are paying taxes out We there. don't do anything. We make everybody wait well, indefinitely. No, that's not even where I'm going with that. I, I, I would very much like to see the redesign for this five-foot sidewalk all the way down to see what that's going to cost, because we may be able to do the whole kit and caboodle at one time. We don't know and unless we get the information. Another $75 fee. How much? $75,000 fee, give or I, take. We don't know. Mm -hmm. Costs a lot of money <laughs> so, to do redesigns. But I'd, I'd much rather make sure we're doing things correctly before we start spending the money. That's, that's, uh, that's where I'm going with it. I, so, I just want to make sure that when we Amherst, say... I just have a question on this because something just popped in my head here about these MOTs. Now, if we're going to go ahead and phase it, we go from phase one to phase two. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say we're in the middle of phase one because we're looking at a year down the road anyways. And phase two is going to be $1.3 million for the sidewalk and trail to finish it. If we mobilize that while we're under construction, there wouldn't be another MOT. It would be concurrent. You're just adding on to it on the, under the same time span, correct? You don't have the money for phase two. No. I'm talking next year. If, if we're in two years of construction I what saying. and we keep going while we're yeah. under construction, do it that way. that's, that's, that's what I'm asking. Makes sense. Com Commissioner um, Emrich, it's going to depend on how you set up your contract. For example, we could not do that and then have a change order to add another phase into a contract. But if we set the contract up with alternates as, you know, the next phase, depending on when we could get it in there, it has to be in, into the original contract. If so we can I'll get it worded just so and then it, it's feasible with okay. timing that they're still working out there, that they don't have to come back, then I'm yes. I'm catching what you're throwing Right, and, and I understand that. That's something that we can then. negotiate yeah. as we're going. Hey, no, you guys I'll, are... I'll, I'll, uh, amend my, I'll amend my motion. You're going to make to, an amendment? Yes. Go ahead. To have the second phase be Sumter to Toledo Blade. Yeah, I think if we could get it so that... This, I think that would cover it, that that's an option or an additional, we can word it through procurement. So yes. The second phase is included in there so that we can accomplish because, you know, Julie was correct. If we can't predetermine who's going to get phase two unless we put it out in no. the first procurement process. I know. But if it wasn't on the motion, you can't do any of that. Correct. So that's why I made the amendment. Do you want to um, expand on what phase two is going to look like? Is it a six I foot? I just said phase no. You said from Sumter to Toledo Blade. Is it the multimodal path? It's the multimodal. It it's what we have it's designed. designed. Yeah. Yes. That's what I was looking Thank for you. in your motion. Sorry. I... A second. Got motion, uh, an amendment on the floor by Commissioner Carason for phase two for Sumter to Toledo Blade as currently designed, and that was seconded by Commissioner Hanks. Anything to the amendment, Commissioner Just Carason? To be clear, it's, a, it's from Ponce to Sumter as designed, a mm -hmm. sidewalk from Van Camp right. to Ponce, and then the phase two would be Sumter to Toledo right. as designed. And the reason why I said a sidewalk from um, Van Camp to Ponce is it's actually um, less wide of a street between uh, one point to the other. It's a lot smaller once you pass Ponce, <coughs> just so you know. And the other thing is that as as Commissioner Hanks was talking, 
you know, here I'm really trying to find a way that we can all compromise and, and do what's right for the people out there who've been looking for this for 20 years. But Spring Haven is what comes to mind. And it took how many years? Mm -hmm. 10 years repetitively being redesigned, redesigned, redesigned. We wasted so much money on Spring Haven. <coughs> it's a sin. I'd love to see that cost. How much money do we waste on it's redesigning a sin. Spring Haven? Yeah. What, what are you giggling How at? Much would you say? It's quite a bit, I guess. I would say it was at least 600000 at least over a half million. It was a lot of money. Because I know between the, uh, the infrastructure, the redesigns, so the the um, the redoing of the drainage, the drainage piping, uh, because it took so long. Then it, the new swift mud guidelines, honestly, probably at least a million. So my point is that. And then the wildlife corridor that we had to redesign and make sure all that. All right. Stuff. So let's let's point rein is this in so when that I'm, we can keep moving on. And my keep thought it process <laughs> in this decision is that. I don't want to see another Spring Haven. I don't right. want us to see another one. one. And we're, we're nine minutes late for our commission meeting. Um, we need to just take this motion. I, and then we I, I, I understand. we got to finish the motion. Um, City Attorney, do we, we're in the middle of a motion and an amendment, but we were supposed to start a commission meeting at 6. Can I finish this motion and then have a conversation as to what we need to do because of that start time for the commission meeting? Fine. We also have a solid waste. I know. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So let's get this amendment. Um, phase two to Toledo Blade is currently designed. That's the amendment on the floor. Anything else to that, guys? Yeah, I think this is <clears throat> this is exactly the conservative approach that needs to be done because you either decide if you want to do it or you don't decide if you want to do it. Uh, you know, it, you know, it's easy to say, well, we want to we want to save money and we want to do things. <clears throat> uh, you know. Uh, you know, when we make this big show uh, about it, and, and in reality, we expend so much more ancillary costs that you don't really have any savings. And then um, situations like this, blame goes out that, oh, look, these guys just want to spend money, when in reality, the money savings is being done right the first time. So um, I appreciate the motion. I appreciate you re-amending it, Commissioner Carestone, because it's actually the conservative way to do this. Thank you. All right. Any other comments? We'll go ahead and take the vote as the motion maker, Commissioner Carson. Yes. Sorry. Commissioner okay. Hanks is the second. Wait, are, didn't we have to this do the amendment? The amendment. Okay. This is on the amendment. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Commissioner Emmerich. Yes. Commissioner, uh, Vice Mayor. The amendment is to make phase two. Phase from two. The end of the contract. Yes. Uh, and it's as a multi-use. Yes. So I'm yes, ma'am. And I also am in no. Any reasons for your dissent, uh, Vice Mayor? I'll explain after the motion. Thank you, and I will, I think I've already said it, but I'll reiterate after the main motion. All right, so now we have a motion on the floor as amended for the current design, six, uh, for using the current design for the multimodal from Pont to Sumter and from Pont to Van Camp is the six foot sidewalk as amended with the phase two. Uh, motion maker was Commissioner Carason, your vote. Yes. Commissioner Hanks. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Emmerich. Yes. Vice Mayor. No. And I am a no. Yes. All right. So, Vice Mayor, your reasons for dissent. Do you want to state? Uh, so the money is there for this phase project uh, so that it can be done without uh, dipping into anything else or taking from anywhere else. Uh, so I understand that. But uh, I still wanted the, uh, to see the option of the estimate of reducing the size to the sidewalk before making a vote, uh, taking into consideration all of the citizen comments that have been made. Thank you. And that was pretty much exactly what I was saying earlier, that this would be getting the additional information would have um, been able to make a very educated decision. A lot of citizens are against this multimodal, mm -hmm. um, and I know a lot of citizens are for it. It's one of those 50-50 kind of things. Um, I would have liked to have seen the additional information to be able to make a educated decision, so that's the reason for my no vote. Appreciate us not wasting money doing all that. 
So now we are finished with this. I believe we are done with road and drainage. Okay. So it is now 613. We are Mayor, adjourned from Mayor. road and drainage. And we need to consult the city Why? attorney. To Hopefully there was no public comment because that's what I was just thinking. <laughs> Good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, we do. We do. Fourteen. Are we ready? Are we going to solid waste or are we going to road and drainage? Okay. I mean to commission. Okay. Solid waste, right? All righty, folks. It is now six fourteen, and I do call this solid waste commission meeting, uh, district meeting to order. Uh, those present are uh, Commissioner Hanks, Vice Mayor Luke, myself, Mayor McDowell, Commissioner Carasone, Commissioner Emmerich. We have City Attorney, City. Um, manager, city clerk, and deputy chief, hello, um, present. We said the Pledge of Allegiance earlier, and city attorney, I'm going to turn it over to you so you could discuss uh, the protocols for this hybrid meeting. Thank you, Mayor. In accordance with the Governor's Executive Order 20-69 and the City Manager's Emergency Order number 2020-03, no in-person public attendance will be permitted during this public meeting. This meeting is being broadcast live on the city's website and on YouTube. Information about ways to watch and provide public comment are posted on the city's website at cityofnorthport.com slash online meetings. That information is also posted on the bulletin board in City Hall and attached to the agenda for this meeting. To provide public comment, you may use the online public comment form on the website at cityofnorthport.com slash public comment. The form becomes active at 9 a.m. the day before the meeting and will be deactivated at the end of public comment during the meeting. Public comment may also be made by leaving a voicemail message via telephone at 941-429-1032 the day before the meeting from 8 a.m. until 7 p.m. Required information is referenced on the online form and in the outgoing voicemail message. Comments meeting these requirements that are timely submitted will be accepted and included in the official record of this meeting. Any comment received that does not meet the public comment requirements will be rejected and will not be included in the official record of the meeting. Mayor, in my opinion, these measures satisfy all applicable legal requirements. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, I need a motion to approve the agenda, or should Actually, we? I would like to move to postpone the road in or Solids. solid waste district regular meeting to July 2nd, 9 a.m. If we can get it advertised in time. If not, then we'll have it on. I think the next one's the 14th. Do you want to postpone the meeting or would you like to continue the That's items? what I was trying to go with here. Could continue. Okay, I'd move to continue the items from the solid waste district regular meeting to July 2nd, 9 a.m. <coughs> if possible. Um, if not, it would be the next earliest convenience per city manager. How's that? Got a motion on the floor to continue the solid waste meeting to 9 a.m. on July 2nd, if possible, due to noticing requirements or to the next available meeting per the city manager's discretion. And I Mayor, need a to, second. Is that to continue the items or to continue the meeting? I think you want to continue the items, not the meeting. Continue the items? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I, sorry. It's like all the same to me. I understand. Sorry about that. Do I have a second on the motion? Second. Thank you. 
All right, so motion, motion on the floor by Commissioner Carrison, seconded by um, Vice Mayor. Anything to that, Commissioner? No, I feel bad for... Yeah. But Frankie's not even here, so what are we feeling bad for? Really? <laughs> Frankie's standing right there. <laughs> probably, he's probably like, yes. That's all right. We'll just anything to wait that, Vice for Mayor? him. There we go. Anybody Chismal. else have anything to speak to about this motion on the floor? Hearing none, let's go ahead and take voice vote as a motion maker. Uh, Commissioner Carrison? Yes. Vice Mayor? Yes. Commissioner Hanks? Yes. Commissioner Yes. And I yes, so this, the items of this meeting have been postponed. Thank you, City Attorney, by the way. <laughs> it's been a long time since I had to do that. <laughs> All righty, and at this time, time, do we have any public comment? Thank you very much. All right, seeing no other business that needs to be tended to, it is 618 and I adjourn this Solid Waste District meeting. Commission and then take break. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Julie, don't go anywhere. Heather, we still have no access. We could to open our it. You could thing. read your thing. We could mm -hmm. go have our break, <laughs> and then you'd still be done reading it. And okay, okay, let's. <laughs> Ready? You're getting good at it. City clerk. Well, good evening, everybody. It is 6-19. Our district meetings took a little bit longer than anticipated, and I do call this City Commission regular meeting to order. Those present are Commissioner Emmerich, Commissioner Caruso, and myself, Mayor McDowell, Vice Mayor Luke, Commissioner Hanks. We have our City Clerk, our City Attorney, City Manager, and Deputy Chief back there. So we do have our quorum. Um, at this time, I would like to ask Miss Julie to please come up and say the Pledge of Allegiance <laughs> again. And as no. she's making her way, um, she said the Pledge of Allegiance earlier, but I've asked her to do it again for this meeting because Julie is celebrating her 40th anniversary as an employee with the City of Northport, and that is something to be really proud of. And Miss Julie, again, thank you. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Julie, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. All righty. Um, at this time, I'm going to turn it over to City Attorney so she can talk about our hybrid requirements for this meeting. Thank you, Mayor. In accordance with the Governor's Executive Order 20-69 and the City Manager's Emergency Order Number 2020-03, no in-person public attendance will be permitted during this public meeting. This meeting is being broadcast live on the city's website and on YouTube. Information about ways to watch and provide public comment are posted on the website at cityofnorthport.com slash online meetings, posted on the bulletin board in City Hall, and attached to the agenda for this meeting. To provide public comment, you may use the online form at the city's website at cityofnorthport.com slash public comment. The form becomes active at 9 a.m. the day before the meeting and will be deactivated at the end of public comment during this meeting. Public comment may also be made by leaving a voicemail message via telephone at 941-429-1032 the day before the meeting from 8 a.m. until 7 p.m. <coughs> required information is referenced on the online form and in the outgoing voicemail message. Comments meeting these requirements that are timely submitted will be accepted and included in the official record of the meeting. Any comment received that does not meet the public comment requirements will be rejected and will not be included in the official record of the meeting. Madam Mayor, in my opinion, these measures satisfy all applicable legal requirements. Thank you very much, City Attorney. Um, do, since we probably need a health break, if not maybe a quick dinner break, <coughs> do we want to take a 30-minute uh, recess um, before we reconvene and do our agenda and items on the agenda? 30 minutes, guys? Okay. 30 minutes okay so we will be back here at let's say five to seven five to seven six fifty five that's right all right we are in recess thank you
City Manager? I, I just want to make sure everybody's ready. Well, good evening, everybody. We're back to our commission meeting. It is now 6.56, and I call it back to order. We are to the point now. We do have a quorum. Uh, Commissioner Hanks, uh, Vice Mayor Luke, myself, uh, Commissioner Carason, are pre oh, and there, here comes Commissioner Emrich. So we do have everybody in the house, city manager, city attorney, city clerk. Um, so we are to the point now where we are going to approve the agenda, please. So moved. Second. Motion on the floor to approve the agenda as presented by Commissioner Carason, seconded by Commissioner Emrich. Um, Commissioner Carason? Yes. Commissioner Emmerich? Yes. Commissioner Hanks? Yes. Vice Mayor? Yes. Myself? Yes. All righty. So now we will move on to public comment. City Clerk, do we have any public general public comment for this? No? Thank you. Well, then I guess you're going to have to read announcements then. The current vacancies for the following boards and committees include the Art Advisory Board, Audit Committee, Beautification and Tree Scenic Highway Committee, Charter Review Advisory Board, Citizens Tax Oversight Committee, Community Economic Development Advisory Board, Environmental Advisory Board, Historic and Cultural Advisory Board, Joint Management Advisory Board, Police Officers Pension Board of Trustees, Northport Youth Council, Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, Planning and Zoning Advisory Board, Public Utility Advisory Board, and Zoning Board of Appeals. The upcoming expirations for the following advisory boards and committees. Charter Review Advisory Board, Environmental Advisory Board, Historic and Cultural Advisory Board, and Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. One Northport resident to serve on the Sarasota Manatee Metropolitan Plan and Organizations Citizen Advisory Network. If anyone would like more information, please see the City Clerk's Office. Thank you. Thank you, City Clerk. Appreciate that. All right, so going on to our consent agenda. City Manager, has anybody requested anything to be pulled from consent? No, ma'am. Thank you very much. I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items. So moved. Second. Motion on the floor by Vice Mayor to approve consent, and that was seconded by Commissioner um, Hanks. Anything to that, Vice Mayor? No, ma'am. Commissioner Hanks? No, ma'am. Before we take the vote, I just wanted on the record that I did not pull the vehicles that are being surplused. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll go ahead and take the vote, Vice Mayor. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Hanks. Yes. Commissioner Emmerich? Yes. Commissioner Carrison? Yes. And yes. So the consent agenda items have passed five to zero. And yes, I did look at them all, just so you know. Ordinance number 2020-22, we're here for second reading, and that is for calling for a referendum to determine whether we are going to, to determine if the deputy city clerk will be removed um, as a charter position. City clerk, could you please read by title only? Ordinance number 2020-22, an ordinance of the city of Northport, Florida, calling for a referendum question to be placed before the qualified electors of the city of Northport, Florida at the November 3rd, 2020 general election, providing a charter referendum question determining whether to amend the city charter to remove the designation of the deputy city clerk as a charter officer providing for the full text of the proposed charter amendment, providing findings, providing for an effective date if the proposed charter amendment is approved, providing for the filing of the ordinance with the Sarasota County Supervisor of Elections, providing for publication of the text of the proposed charter amendment, providing for filing with the Florida Department of State if the proposed charter amendment is approved, providing for conflicts, providing for severability, and providing an effective date. Thank you very much, City Clerk. I guess, City Attorney, this is yours. Thank you, Mayor. This is second reading. There were no changes from first reading, so I'm happy to answer any questions the board may have. Anybody have any questions? Entertain a motion. A move to approve ordinance number 2020-22 as presented. Second. Motion on the floor by Vice Mayor to approve ordinance number 2020-22 as presented, and that was seconded by Commissioner Emmerich. Anything to that, Vice Mayor? No, ma'am. Commissioner Emmerich? No, ma'am. Anybody else? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and take the voice vote. Commi uh, Vice Mayor? Yes. Commissioner Emmerich? Yes. Commissioner Hanks? Yes. Commissioner Carousel? Yes. And myself? Yes. That passed unanimously, 5 to 0. All right, going on to the ordinance number 2020 24. This is the first reading for a uh, proving an addition or 
denying an additional homestead exemption for persons 65 and older with certain income limits. I need a motion to read by title only. Second. Motion to read by title only by Commissioner Carison, seconded by Commissioner, I'm sorry, Vice Mayor Luke. Anything, Commissioner Carison? No. Nope. Vice Mayor? No. We'll go ahead and take voice vote. Commissioner Carison? Yes. Vice Mayor? Yes. Commissioner Hanks? Yes. Commissioner Emmerich? Yes. Myself, yes. <clears throat> City Clerk, could you please read by title only? Ordinance number 2020-24, an ordinance of the City of Northport, Florida, amending Chapter 3 of the Code of the City of Northport, Florida, and creating Section 3-15 regarding an additional homestead exemption for persons 65 and older with certain income limits, providing for conflicts, providing for severability, providing for codification, and providing an effective date. Thank you, City Clerk. City Attorney, I believe this one's yours also. Thank you, Mayor. This ordinance comes at the Commission's request uh, and is based on Florida statutes section 196.075 this is to allow an additional senior homestead exemption for persons over a certain age who are within a qualifying income range the commission directed that we bring back this ordinance um, we put it into the code alongside the current economic development exemption ordinance uh, I'm sorry uh, exemption period you also asked for some potential economic financial impacts. You see those in the staff summary. You asked for the statute allows you to exempt up to 50,000. You directed the ordinance to come back at 25, but you asked for the financial impacts at 10, 20, and 50,000. So those appear in the staff summary. Thank you. City Manager, did you want to add anything? No, ma'am. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Um, the only question that I have is if you go to line 16 in the second whereas clause, when I read this initially, I thought that it implied, whether it does or not, that the city commission is determining that this is in the best interest of the citizens of Northport to establish an additional homestead exemption for persons meeting the prescribed criteria. I don't want anybody for an inkling thinking this commission is setting that criteria because it's set by state statute, which is in that first whereas clause. And I was wondering, city attorney, if maybe to keep it clear and remove any question that we add at the end of in the prescribed criteria set forth in Florida state statutes could be added. If it's the will of the board, yes, ma'am. Okay. Doesn't it mention it? I mean, our material can't pull up, you know, on the it, it references it. The first whereas clause refers to the, the Constitution and that section of the statute saying it grants local governments the ability to establish the additional homestead exemption for certain persons aged 65 years and older and whose household income does not exceed certain limits. Then you get to the second one. And whereas the commission has determined it's in the best interest of the citizens of the city of Northport to establish an additional household homestead exemption for persons meeting the prescribed criteria. I'm actually fine with it reading that way. It, it spells it out. Yeah, I, I just am afraid that because it's talking state statutes in the first one, and then, then in the second one it's saying that the commission recognizes this, and it says the person's meeting the prescribed criteria. I, I just was looking to remove all doubt that it's not this commission setting that criteria. It is actually mm -hmm. Florida mm -hmm. state statutes. So it, it, it's the will of the board. I just wanted to bring it to everybody's attention. I do feel that it might be a little bit MB um, questionable. Question. I'm sorry? Um, when we had this discussion the first round, I remember I had asked about the county's exemption for those who are taking care of their elderly parents or what have you, and we were going to get some sort of information back on that if the county had it and what the exemption was? That was not part of the direction of the minutes. Okay. I'm sure. I don't, it, that may have been part of the discussion, I don't recall, but I did carefully go back and look at the minutes of okay. the direction. Okay, all right, all right. I wasn't sure, so I just remember not getting it. That's and all. this this ordinance provides everything, you know, as much as the statute, this particular statute allows. This one, right. Except that it allows you up to 50,000, and this one's written for 25. Anybody else have any questions? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and entertain a motion. I move to 
continue ordinance number 2020-24 for second reading on July 2nd of 2020. Second. Motion on the floor to um, move ordinance 2020-24 to second reading on July 22nd. And that was made by Vice Mayor, seconded by Commissioner Carison. Vice Mayor, anything to that? Uh, I don't, I didn't think the wording needed to be added in the second whereas when the criteria was named in the first whereas. So I'm fine with the way that it, it reads. Thank you. Commissioner Carousel? I'm good. All righty. Anybody else want to weigh in? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and take voice vote. Um, Vice Mayor? Yes. Commissioner Carousel? Yes. Commissioner Emmerich? Yes. But, um, Commissioner Hanks? Yes. And myself? Yes. And that passed five to zero unanimously. Moving on to second reading. All right, so now we're gonna to go to ordinance number 2020-25, which is a referendum um, question for the 20, November 3rd, 2020 election for um, whether to grant an economic development um, ad valorem property tax exemption. I need a motion to have city clerk read by title only. So moved. Second, I've got a motion on the floor to read by title only by Vice Mayor, seconded by myself. We'll go ahead and take voice vote. Vice Mayor? Yes. Myself, yes. Commissioner Carrison? Yes. Commissioner Rich? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Hanks? Yes. And that passed five to zero, City Clerk. Ordinance number 2020-25, an ordinance of the City of Northport, Florida, calling for a referendum question to be placed before the qualified electors of the City of Northport, Florida at the November 3, 2020 general election, providing a referendum question determining whether to grant the City Commission the authority to allow economic development ad valorem property tax exemptions for new businesses and expansions to, expansions to existing businesses providing for findings, providing for the conduct of the referendum election, providing for the form of the ballot, providing for notice of election, providing for the supervisor of elections to post a copy of this ordinance at each polling place, providing for an effective date if the referendum question is approved, providing for filing of the ordinance with the Sarasota County Supervisor of Elections, providing for conflicts, providing for severability, and providing an effective date. Thank you, City Clerk. City Attorney. Thank you, Mayor. This ordinance also comes back at the direction of the Commission. Florida Statute Section 196.1995 gives municipalities the authority to grant economic development ad valorem tax exemptions, provided that it's adopted by referendum, meaning it has to go to vote of the public. And when the public votes on that, the authority is good for 10 years. The city currently has this authority in its code, but it is expiring in August, which will be the 10th anniversary of the referendum at which it was approved. This ordinance would take it again to referendum in November and would allow the city to continue having, the city commission to continue having the authority to grant economic development ad valorem tax exemptions, um, which is a, a tool for economic development. It should be noted that if this ordinance is approved and it goes to referendum, that simply gives the commission the authority to do it. There's no automatic exemption that is applied. Someone would have to there's a process that someone would have to apply for the exemption that would come before the commission, I believe in the form of an ordinance, to <coughs> grant that exemption on a case-by-case basis. Thank you, City Attorney. City Manager, did you want to weigh in on this since it affects economic development? Yes, ma'am. Um, this is something that the city has had in place for the last 10 years. Um, it is due to expire. It's not something that we've actually utilized before, but it is a tool to have for economic development. Um, I believe our city, due to some of the recent events, is in a situation where having something like this might be utilized in the future. Um, I'm always a big fan of having all the tools that we can in the toolbox for our economic development. This is one of those, the city attorney said, it's nothing that is automatic. So a business can't come and just get this without the commission actually taking a subsequent action. Right now, this just gives us an option of something that if a business wanted to come to town, that we can say these are some of the incentives that can be offered if, if approved by the commission. Um, Sarasota County, as well as City of Sarasota, Venice, and us <coughs> currently all have this in place right now. Um, I have in front of me, uh, which I can send to you all, some of the requirements that they go through the EDC of Sarasota County of what they need to do in order to even qualify for this under their program. We could certainly keep that in place or make our own, but um, I think I think this is something that our city is poised to need 
in the in the future. And if we, as I know this commission has made economic development a priority, as have some <coughs> of our previous commissions, if it's going to continue to be a priority, we need to have options available. Thank you, City Manager. Um, seeing no lights, uh, Vice Mayor. Okay, you can't give a light. I know. <laughs> uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe since we've had our new um, manager, director of economic development, she has worked extremely hard since being in the position with the county in order to come up with the criteria for this type of tool. Yes, ma'am. Right. And it is case by case basis. So whoever is up here would have the final determination to say yes or no or how much and all that stuff, but they have to meet the criteria that they have worked on uh, throughout this year, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, we actually have a, a company that is within the county. I think most people have heard of Tervis Tumbler, uh, who employs a lot of Northport people who are looking for a new location. Um, those tools in the toolbox are extremely important when these types of companies uh, that bring that much value uh, to a city are looking for things. So um, just put on the record, I think this needs this tool needs to stay in the toolbox and be utilized as this city grows because we're finally in a place where we're growing. And as city manager said, I like all the tools possible in the toolbox. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Anybody else want to weigh in? I, I do have one question before you do that. Um, you said that economic development has the criteria already established. <clears throat> There's Does, criteria that's been established jointly by all the cities and the county through the EDC of Sarasota County. Does this commission have to approve that criteria? Um, I believe we did. I believe that it, it happened when the first one was put in place. The criteria was set at some point in time. Um, if we didn't want to follow those, we would need to change it and pull out of um, being the same as everybody else in the county. Um, but I, I'll send this to all of you. I didn't send it to you earlier today because you all don't like to receive stuff on the day of the meeting. Um, as a matter of fact, I believe you specifically said not to. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, but you'll all have this. It'd be just if you could send it. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I'd be interested to see what that criteria entails and stuff. So thank you. And Mayor, there is a process in Chapter 3 of the City Code that explains, you know, exactly what the, the process and procedure is for this. We anticipate if the Commission adopts the ordinance ultimately <coughs> this referendum, we anticipate reviewing this chapter and potentially bringing back an ordinance later to revise it with an effective date that would put it in place if the referendum um, were to to be a yes to vote in favor. I'll add it on our list of things to do after November. <laughs> All righty, I'll go ahead and entertain a motion, please. Move to continue business number continue. Telling you. Move to continue ordinance number 2020-25 for second reading on July 2nd, 2020. Second. There's second. a lot of 20s going on. <coughs> Motion on the floor by Commissioner Carason to um, continue ordinance number 2020-25 to second reading on July 2nd, and that was seconded by Vice Mayor. Anything to that, Commissioner? No, I'm Vice glad Mayor. to see it coming back. Uh, just to some of that criteria that is put out there, it has to be a target industry. Has, they have to have a certain amount of 115% of wage and there's, you know, those types of criteria, certain amount of employees that they're they're putting in place. So that's the type of criteria that uh, is in place currently. Thank and you. This is exactly the things that we need to look for if we want to bring in balanced development, yep. jobs. And again, I appreciate that because uh, we definitely don't want to pigeonhole ourselves. I say that over and over again. You can always not approve something, but if it's not in there, you can't approve it. So. Um, the only thing I'd like to add is I hope that city manager will work with our communications team to get some factual information out about this because this can be very easily twisted 
that we're giving new development a free pass on everything. Um, I, I just would like to make sure that there is accurate communication. I know we cannot advocate for referendums one way or another, but I think an educational campaign would be warranted on something like this. But that's just my two cents on that. To combat those three, and they're out there really heavily doing that. All righty. Uh, we'll go ahead and take the vote if there's no other comments. Commissioner Carrison, please. Yes. Vice Mayor. Yes. Commissioner Hanks. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Emmert. Yes. And myself, yes. And that passed uh, five to zero. See you at second reading. All right. Another first reading on ordinance number 2020 28. And this is amending the fee schedule for the building fee permits. Um, I need a motion to read by title only. So moved. Second. Motion on the floor by Vice Mayor to read by title only, seconded by Commissioner Emrich. Anything? Hearing none, Vice Mayor, your vote? Yes. Commissioner Emmerich? Yes. Commissioner Emmerich? I'm sorry, Commissioner Hanks? Yes. Commissioner Carousel? Yes. <laughs> and myself, yes. <laughs> City Clerk, could you please read by title only? Ordinance number 2020-28B, providing for severability, providing for conflicts, providing for codification, and providing an effective date. Thank you very much, City Clerk. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. This item, um, as you remember, we have an emergency order in place right now. Uh, that reduce the building fees that are going into the building fund, the permit fees, only the ones that go into that fund, reducing them by 25%. Um, as we discussed when we talked about that emergency order, that will expire when the state of emergency expires, which um, I am praying happens very, very soon um, for personal reasons <laughs> and well-being. But that being said, that's due to expire in the very near future. and in order for that to continue, as the commission wanted to continue at least for the end of the fiscal year, we need to change the fee ordinance, um, which is what this is being done. And our neighborhood development services staff, as well as the city attorney's office, worked really hard to get this so that if the state of emergency should end this week or early part of next, there is next to no time in between where they would go back up that 25%, and then this could be effective, and they'd go back down. So the idea of this is to make these fees Although it says permanent in there, because until we change the fee ordinance again, they don't change. Um, the fee ordinance does not, there's no requirement that, that fee ordinance be changed year to year. Um, we do change it every year, but there, that's only if a fee changes. So we don't have to do it. Um, that's why the word permanent is in there. Thank you for answering um, my question. <laughs> <laughs> so it's easier to answer that as a group and in person. So the word permanent only means that it's permanently in place until you all change it again. Um, so that being said, this will put those 25% reduction in place um, on an a ongoing basis beyond when we end the state of emergency. So I believe this is accomplishing what the commission asked us to. And with that, I'll just open it up to any questions. Vice Mayor. Yeah, the, the question I had posed to the city manager was that question about it being permanent, because I did not remember this commission having a vote and staying change fees permanently. The conversation I remembered was making sure that the 25% the lasted until at least the end of the year. I did not realize that the fee had to be changed permanently, quote unquote, in order to get us to the end of the year. So thank you for the explanation <coughs> that allows me to have the understanding to vote properly on this. Thank you. That's it. Anybody else have any questions? I just have one. Um, the fourth whereas clause, and this is, again, a language thing. Um, this commission, it says, whereas on May 15th, city manager executed uh, emergency order. Um, this commission directed him to institute that emergency order. And I think that it, it should reflect that to show the desire of the commission 100 percent we we if it says whereas at the direction of the commission or city commission on may 15th the city manager executed emergency order um i think it just confirms even more that this it's not just because of his his emergency order it's because we directed him to do this emergency order for the benefit of the businesses and the property owners who are pulling permits 
So I, I think that's a, a change that should be made. But again, it's at the will of the board. I think I personally think it doesn't matter because he can't do it without us anyway. So emergency yeah. orders, he can. Yeah. No, no, but we had to let him do it, and then he could do it. No. Yeah, emergency we had orders. a meeting right up front, didn't we? And we directed him, but there's been yes. many other emergency orders. I understand orders that, that, that was what that direction was then, was that you could continue those things as long as needed. That was the whole purpose and why we did it, was so that we didn't have to keep having these every other week or every seven days. Not this. Can I ask a question? What do you mean it's not this? This is exactly what it is. Commissioner Carousel. City Attorney, is there a problem in that language? I get what everyone's trying to say here, that yes, we gave the duty to the city manager, but then what I believe Commissioner McDowell is trying to say is that this specific this exactly. issue was a directive by the commission so that the city manager isn't oh, you're, yeah. held accountable for giving a percentage off on the business Correct. tax and I see what you're saying. Okay, you're so team. thank you. And there's absolutely no legal issue with adding some Okay, so there. by we just want to memorialize the history so that we mm -hmm. could, right. could trace back the reductions. Okay. So I I'd be fine with changing the language however you feel that it should be changed to memorialize it, such but I've been agreeing to do this whole thing just to change that. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no sir. We can change that quickly before second reading. Yeah, I think what you you were referring to is every seven days, city manager right. has the power to redo the emergency order, keeping well, I was the relating city. it to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean that's that's right, Commissioner Hanks, that this commission mm -hmm. empowered the city manager right, to, right, to do with certain authority, and that's the authority mm -hmm. that he utilizes to enter the executive right. for the emergency orders, and, that was and some he does on his own, and a couple of you guys have specifically directed. Yeah, but I believe you, but you ratified all of them that relate to regulations. Yes. I just, I appreciate the word memorialize. That's a, a great word to keep it. So. All, right. <clears throat> All right, seeing anybody else? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and entertain a motion. I'll um, move to continue ordinance number 2020-28 um, with an amendment to the whereas clause to memorialize the direction of the commission to the city manager for a second reading on July 2nd, 2020. Second. Motion on the floor is stated by Commissioner Carason for 20, the ordinance 2020-28 with the language change, and that was seconded by Vice Mayor. Anything to that, Commissioner? Nope. Vice Mayor? That motion allows the city attorney to word it however is correct. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, we'll go ahead and take voice vote. Uh, Commissioner Carrison is the motion maker. Yes. Vice Mayor? Yes. Commissioner Armrich? Yes. Commissioner <laughs> Hanks? Yes. And I too am a yes. Thank you very much. All right, now we're going to go on to resolution number 2020 04, which is the policy and procedures for promotional items. Mm. Proclamation. Proclamations was okay. I was like, I'm reading promotional, not proclamation. <laughs> All right, so we will go ahead and have uh, City Clerk please read that resolution by title only. Resolution number 2020 R 04, a resolution of the City of Northport, Florida, adopting a policy and procedures for the distribution of promotional items, providing for conflicts, providing for severability, and providing an effective date. Thank you, City Clerk. Uh, City Manager. Clerk's item, ma'am. I'm sorry, City Clerk. This was um, created in um, response to your request <coughs> on September 24th to create a policy for promotional items. Short, sweet, and simple. Short Thank you, sweet. City Clerk. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions on this? I thought they did a good job. Yeah. If I um, remember correctly, it didn't have like a whole lot to it. It was just that you were allowed to utilize them, right? Which is kind of what we've been doing. Um, the, but it put it in a policy form. There was only one problem I had with it, and I think it was, I have to pull it up. I'm trying to pull it up. Hold on. 
It was one of the last annotations in the Schedule A part where it talked about that a the commission could go to a function and hand out, but it didn't recognize staff being able to do such. Oh, he's on. Um, hold on. Let me, if you look at C1. This one's a commission I got to get it up. That's my. Commissioner, this one's the commission policy on your items. The, the way the staff does it doesn't fall under this policy. Um, it actually does have employees, mm -hmm. elected officials, it does or appointed That's officials. why. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> you guys are killing me. Try again. Okay, so the last C1 is where I think you're looking at. In forever, you know. You there we go. Okay. It actually came up. As much as I fought for technology, I'm starting to wonder if that was a good thing or not. Um, the criteria where it says elected officials, it should be elected officials and employees, similar to what it says above, uh, while acting in their official capacity or designee because there's times when we, we don't necessarily um, sponsor a project, but we're a part of, so for instance, like um, what, the, uh, the police explorers, it's a nonprofit, but yet we interact with them almost as if we're partners, but it's not really a sponsored event if they do something. Uh, Kiwanis, we do a lot with Kiwanis, the fishing tournament. So I have to wonder if it shouldn't be or designee so that you, or or at least mention nonprofit, and that would, that would actually suffice to allow a nonprofit to, if we were to give something to a nonprofit to hand out. I'm not sure how you even word it, but you get what I'm trying to, the point I'm trying to make. Personally, myself, I think promotional items for the city should be attached to the city. Uh, so I believe if, I mean, because I can't pull mine up, but I believe it was in there where it talked about staff handing them out at uh, city connected or city events. And it says employees, elected officials, or appointed officials at city sponsored events, but not everything is a city sponsored event but yet we still are a part of it. So the Chamber of Commerce has their business expo. We have a table. It's not a city sponsored event. You get what I mean? Uh, or you hand out something to the Chamber to give out in their goodie bags from the city. It's not necessarily a sponsored event, but yet they're promoting us. Okay, then we probably need to change sponsored to give more leeway than sponsored. That's fine. You know, I was um, just trying to figure I, I out. I do want to point out, Commissioners, on line 30, that it does allow elected officials mm -hmm. um, to hand things out at conventions, conferences, meetings, or civic events. Correct. So, so that would cover some of what you were talking about, but it would not cover giving the items to another entity. To exactly. Yep, yeah, that's one thing. Um, or to allow staff to do it if this would even apply to them, because it mentions them, but. Well, I would add to the promotion or the sponsorship and add um, participating, you know, sponsoring or participating in. But yeah, I, I see what you're I would, saying. I'm yeah. hoping someone with more because we're, we're, I mean, we do we we get booths at the chamber, business mm -hmm. to business yeah. or whatever, business and community. The uh, so the that uh, San be. Pedro's Church Festival. The I mean, there's a lot of things that sometimes it's just easier to hand them the frisbees. And yeah, take. we're not we're not sponsoring, but we are right. involved in it. It's an activity we're active in. Or we don't go there, but we give them the stuff to put in the goodie bag. Like, I don't know how many times Boys and Girls Club has gotten some sort of item to put in the goodie bag to give to someone, like at, at the um, the library fashion show. The city manager made a good point that 
that typically when you all want to do that, <coughs> you do it the staff to do it. And at line 28, section two, allow city departments to, to distribute promotional items in the course of city business. Oh, that's where it was covered. I, I knew it was covered in there somewhere. City departments in the course of city business. So you're saying that the city department could give it to Kiwanis to hand out? Yep. Okay. Because it would be promoting the city. So well, we're, I would, you know, you we're know. promoting the city. We can give it to Qantas. If we're at a conference that has, we have a table somewhere, we can give it out there. Because or we're if there the Library Foundation. Foundation needed a good something for their goodie bag. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. the course of city business is vague enough. <laughs> that, okay. Broad enough. That too. Yeah. Not well, that's what I was word. concerned about the course <laughs> of city business because if it's on a Saturday, we're open twenty four seven. Three sixty five. And I'm fine. If you're okay with it, I'm okay with it. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that. I didn't find that problem until you started making uh, questions. Thinking about all the different times that we've given something to someone to give out. And well, I just wanted to make sure. When we go to the schools. Exactly. You know, yeah. that we can take something to the children. And so those are, and we go in an official capacity. Right. So it would be that one. I was yeah. making sure that that was covered. Thank you. Before we close this out, um, we when we gave the direction for this, we we also said to bring back about the uh, a letter f from the city. You know, if somebody has a request for a letter, um, some uh, about the city seal, um, promotional advertising, the key to the city. All of that was supposed to come back in two months, and it's now going on like four or five. And bring it back during the COVID because it was going to be such a long conversation to have over Zoom. The Pete, the ceremony, ceremonial items are scheduled for July 28th. The city seal and logo is with the city attorney's office right now. It did come back when I just sent it back with another changes on it, so that's going to come shortly as well. So they are all being worked on, and some of them are ready to come to you, but we wanted to do it when we're all here and not over Zoom. Okay. Thank you for that update. I appreciate that. All right. So does anybody else have any questions on this item? I move to approve resolution number 2020-R04 as presented. Motion on the floor by Vice Mayor uh, to approve resolution 2020-R04 as presented, seconded by Commissioner Emmerich. Anything to that, Vice Mayor? Yeah, I think we've covered everything. All righty. All right, we'll go ahead and take voice vote. Uh, Vice Mayor? Yes. Commissioner Emmerich? Yes. Commissioner Carson? Yes. Commissioner Hank? Yes. And myself? Uh, yes. So that passed five to zero unanimously. All right, so now we'll move on to discussion and possible action regarding the quasi judicial procedure. Um, City Attorney. Boy, you're a popular one today. <laughs> Yeah, I have to write out the city manager who just said, I like this. <laughs> um, this is another item coming back at commission direction, or as a result of commission direction, but it's coming back a little differently than what you asked for. Um, the commission directed us after a, a conversation that was started by Commissioner Carison to come back with an ordinance to modify our quasi-judicial procedures, which we have had a lot of experience with as of late. Too much. And, so Commissioner Carison and I met and looked at um, the conversation was, it was about to make our procedures align with the counties. And we took a look at the county's procedures and realized that our procedures are really not very different than the county's at all. The only differences that I, I found in the county's procedures is that they don't offer closing arguments. Um, in their particular procedures, they don't refer to aggrieved parties. And the order is a little bit different. But that's really it. Otherwise, we're doing essentially the same thing as the county. So, um, and I'm not going to put words in her mouth, I'll let her speak for herself, but my notes reflect that, or my recollection reflects that um, at the end of the discussion, we just determined that maybe there weren't any changes that needed to be made to align with the county, and the commissioner thought instead perhaps that, that the board may want us to make some changes to the flow chart to make it a more useful tool for the board. So we're coming back to you to say, hey, is this what you want? Do you want us to not amend these procedures, and would you like us to change the flow chart? And if so, what would make it more useful for you as a tool. Um, some 
considerations about changing the process are that we would have to retrain all of our boards. We have three boards that utilize the quasi-judicial procedure, the Zoning Board of Appeals, the Planning Zoning Advisory Board, and of course the City Commission. So it's it's not just a matter of modifying the code, but of modifying you know, all of the training and, and making sure that we all follow that properly in the meeting because the process does establish due process. It's very critical that we follow the own, our own process that is in our own code. Commissioner Kirsten did have some suggestions that are captured in the staff summary um, about resources for the commission, maybe adding some resources to the commission handbook and maybe somewhere on a website where you could access some videos. I told her that our the city attorney's office has a quasi-judicial training that we provide to the two advisory boards annually and we have it recorded. Now, there's no Q&A, but it's recorded in case people miss the training and they're required to watch it within 30 days and certify that. And um, she pointed out that there might be some other resources, I think, with the League of Cities or the Attorney General's office that could be helpful to commissioners. So to put those on the website somewhere and then put that resource in the handbook might be useful for all of you. If that's not enough of an earful, a couple of things that, um, that I would like to, to recommend that you discuss are having the city attorney's office provide training for this board every year on quasi-judicial procedures. We could do that at a workshop. We do have the video, but the Q&A is, you know, is really a useful thing. So we could do that in about an hour, you know, just annually do it maybe at the December workshop <coughs> every year so that covers after the election, even though we would meet one-on-one -on -one with any new electeds, but still that would reaffirm that. Um, also to consider um, allowing us to look at not the procedure itself, not the process of what we do during the meeting, but look at the section related to aggrieved parties and make sure it's clear what the standard is and who decides where that standard has been met. Um, so that there's, there's the few that we've had that filed seem like they were clearly aggrieved parties, but you know, who decides that and what, what makes it so clear? We'd really like to look at what some other entities are doing and see if there might be some ways we can clean that up and that would not require a change in training or the actual in-meeting process. Uh, I think that's it. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Carson, did you want to weigh in since this was one of your things but, that you wanted to do? I don't know how you could weigh any more. It should okay. be wonderful. I mean, Excellent. honestly, it's just about flow, the flow. We need to get clearer on the flow. And I do agree the training would be a huge um, but in addition, I think that um, Robert's Rules of Order training needs to be attached to that as well. Um, that's what we used to do, and we'd go to Sarasota for it every year. So to maybe coincide with the clerk's department and do that is a, and they did it every year. So. Vice Mayor? Definitely 100%, I agree with that. Here we are commissioners, and I discuss this topic because it flows into the next topic too with the city attorney and she questioned well you guys get your quasi-judicial training from florida league of city right and i'm like i don't remember it mm -hmm. but if it I didn't see that class it, well you didn't go yet it's your first class yeah but it's just it's class. just briefly mm -hmm. touched on <laughs> it's not giving you all the ins and outs and stuff and when all the other boards receive yearly training mm -hmm. and we don't, mm -hmm. we're missing out. Uh, th these needs need to be refreshed. Mm -hmm. Monday's last Monday's quasi judicial was a training session of its own, uh, and we rarely get them when they're like that. So mm -hmm. if you go two years, three years without big, heavy quasi judicial discussions. You, you lose track. You have the tendency to lose track. So I think the refreshing that you guys discuss is phenomenal, and I think it needs to be put in place. And I didn't even know there were video resources available. I think that's that's great information to have. Um, so I, I agree, we, we need to have the training. Um, I would like to see, now that I know PZEB and ZBA get this training, I can cross that off my list because I was unaware that they already got that. Mm -hmm. um, but I would also, if we're going to have these video resources available to us, I think it should also be available um, 
to them too. Um, you know, if, if there's like a little library kind of thing. Um, but yeah, definitely the training. And I love the idea of it December. That way then it gets, and you may even want to do it right close after the election in case there is a, um, yeah. a, a quasi-judicial hearing between election and December training. Um, I, I really think in that within the whole board at one time, maybe a quick workshop or even at a commission meeting or something. Um, but I, I think maybe waiting till December may prove to be a problem if there is a quasi hearing in between that time or else just schedule all the quasis after that training. I don't know. <laughs> so I just wanted to put that out there. But yeah, I think it is a great idea. Um, but we definitely need to get in a, a grief party criteria set because there is none. And I, because we don't have a policy in place for it, I would hate to tell an aggrieved party no, even though they live two miles away from a development, how do you tell them no if there's no policy? I wanna be clear, there is criteria, but it, it you know, it's it's essentially that you have, have to have a greater injury than is the Is it vague or public. broad? Which is it? Well, it's one of the two, I'm yeah. sure. I think it's both. Allegedly, <laughs> arguably. Spoken like an attorney. <laughs> Thank you. Did anybody else want to weigh in on this? I have oh, a question. I'm sorry, Commissioner Rich. When, when you stated what the county did different than what we did, did you say that they they don't use the final argument portion of it? They they do not have a closing argument portion. That is correct. Because but their planning commission is a whole lot different mm -hmm. than our PZAB, and they almost go through a whole hearing with the planning commission first and then go to the county commission. So it's like they're hit twice. Remember that? Well, ours does the same. No. They go through the full process at planning and zoning too. But I'm not sure, I've never watched the county, so you might be aware of some distinction you know, on the ground that I'm not. And based on what happened at the uh, last quasi, when there was a um, interruption, and I don't want to say interruption, there was a objection, that's the word, objection, and I said, no, you can use that at closing arguments, now is not the time. So I, I think it, it gave me a tool as the chair of the meeting to be able to say, this is when you get to do that. And by having closing arguments there, I was able to just put it right into that, that little bucket. Um, by removing that, it, I would have then been sitting there going, hmm, what do I do now? <laughs> so um, I think it's important to have it in there. I think even the attorney that made the objection um, just kind of went, okay, great. I've got closing arguments. I can do it then. So. I know the planning commission had the closing arguments. This, the county commission, I've never, like you said, I, I've never heard them ask for that. So, well, continuing arguments. on, what I was getting at was, um, thank you, attorney uh, Vanessa. Yeah. But uh, now, what I was asking was because we license. did we did go through. They they have their presentations, then they have rebuttals. That would have been about the only thing I would have changed. But when they do do an objection, they have the right to make their ex objection. And, and it just goes on the record. And then you go from there. So wherever it's at, they can still object. I'm not saying we change it. That's the only thing I was saying that I would change. Because when you go through that process, again, when those closing statements, you added another hour onto that procedure Monday night. So depending on the situation, it is time consuming on the hearing. That could be true. It's you know it's five minutes per party, but because we had three items that did add an additional hour. One thing that from a, a legal perspective that I like about the closing arguments is that they're in reverse order, so the applicant goes absolutely last, um, and I like that because that means that they have a chance to respond to anything that they've heard. You know, there's nobody who gets to go mm -hmm. after them, so there you know there's nothing that that they could have you know they get their last say. Um, so I think that ordering is good, is good from that perspective. Um, you know, if you are inclined to make a change. No, I'm not saying that we make the change. I was just putting it out there that if that change was made, this is how it would affect it. That's all. And just based on all the different quasi hearings that we've had, I think I could probably count three, maybe four, where it was every single item had discussion on it, usually quasi-hearing, oh, we, no, we don't have closing argument, no, we don't have rebuttal, 
could you state that for the record and it's over and done, but there's been only a very few that have actually used every single step of that process, but the process is there for that reason if they want me to. So um, I don't know, do you need? Did you see the 2017 flow chart? Because when uh, city attorney and I had talked about it, we talked about maybe cleaning up the flow chart and maybe going back to the old way we did it. It and, is attached to the backup. And it's in the backup, so it's kind of up to the commission. Do you like the way it is now, or is this one a little bit more? I that was a discussion on the simpler. formatting. We yeah. need to go back to it to utilize the formatting. I, I think this one is simpler than the 2017. Yeah, I it is? Okay. It's, I, found, I, I find it easier, I, and I guess it's because, you know, as the chair, this is the one that we've been using, and, and maybe Commissioner Hanks can weigh in because this is what he, we were using, too. Um, I, I just find it easier because that's all that I've used as a chair. I, I personally don't mind it. Again, it's the only thing I know. So mm -hmm. it works for me. You know? And honestly, as long as you're getting the training on an annual basis, it right. won't matter what Now the, that, the chart I is. would say, would be phenomenal is yeah. if we had training, which is what we decided to do when we uh, chose to come up with a part of the reason why we chose to come up with a commission handbook right. was because, you know, when whenever we got in, we just, we had no idea what no to do, idea. when to do, how to do it, you know, and we relied on, you know, Vanessa, we relied on Linda to, you know, Commissioner, I don't know, I'll call them by their first name, mm -hmm. Linda and Vanessa, and, and uh, we relied on you guys to kind of get us through that first few months, you know. And so I'm done now. <laughs> and you're out of here. So now it's on the rest of it. It's all on <laughs> it's you on now. I got some other hand gestures for you. <laughs> In 2017, you have two columns, and it was kind of hard. Hard to know. Yeah, because oh, you were trying to say yeah. this column, that column, this, or if that. So I like, I like the this flow of just like the single. Yeah. Right, the single column I think is easier. So let's get a, a motion to. I don't think. Need a motion. Well, we need to give them direction to make sure we get our training every November, December, whenever. Uh, I think we need to do that, and also for the um, um, the grief party, the grief party, so that they can come up with a, a plan for that. Go ahead, Vanessa. And you go. Um, move to direct staff to come up with a training program for quasi-judicial process for the city commission to attend on an annual basis, preferably after elections are held, as well as to define criteria for aggrieved parties. Anything else? Second. Um, Wasn't it? There was something more to do the aggrieved parties, Do something with the video right? resources. And add Yes, uh, um, okay, so you got that part, right? All right, now I'm gonna make an amendment to add the resource list of the videos and any other references to quasi-judicial process into the commission handbook. Second. Okay, so I didn't restate the motion before we went to the amendment. So I got an amendment on the floor to add video resources and other reference materials to the commission handbook that was made by Commissioner Carousel and seconded by Vice Mayor. Anything to the amendment? No. Do we want to make it available to PZAB and um, ZBA? Not the videos they only get the the link to the video if they're absent from the meeting and also okay. when they first start they have to watch it within 30 days along with our other training video thank but you we don't have like a site up or anything where they can just look at it on their own thank you for that clarification seeing no other comments on that we'll go ahead and take the amendment uh by uh commissioner carison yes vice mayor yes commissioner hanks yes commissioner emmerich yes myself yes so now we have a motion on the floor stated by um, Commissioner Carison to have a training program for commissioners after the elections timeframe and define a, a pro, define uh, aggrieved parties. Um, so, and that would be as amended. Is that clear? Yep. 
Thank you very much. And that was made by Commissioner Carison, seconded by Commi uh, Vice Mayor. Anything to the motion as amended, Commissioner Carison? I didn't want to be real specific on the after election for a few reasons. Right. Um, I've seen elections go as far as January. Uh, and so anyways, my point is, <laughs> you know, there's sometimes when those qualifying periods or um, certification periods can go way beyond what you thought. Um, I think we just said after elections. So. so that's why I just wanted to be clear why I was so bland right. about that one in what I said. Not vague. Not for bland. <laughs> Vice Mayor, do you have anything? I, I agree with her statements. Uh, it's more of an onboarding after the mm -hmm. election, that, that type of training that needs to go uh, to the new, newly elected official. Uh, I had somewhat of an onboard but nothing this detailed. That's why that handbook was, you know, brought about. So totally agree. Whenever the new person comes on, training. I want to add that the state attorney site is an incredible um, resource that uh, myself and the city clerks of the past used to go to their annual um, conference every single year and the neat thing about the state attorney's uh, conference, and I don't know if they do it anymore, but they would not only give you kind of the update on um, sunshine law, on public record, but they'd give you new case laws. And so it would be, you would not only learn new case law about uh, quasi-judicial issues, but sunshine law and public record law, but then there was some planning and zoning stuff. Um, so it was kind of all encompassing and I don't know if they still do it or not, but that was a huge, huge conference that was just amazing for us and the clerk to go to. I, I think you meant the attorney general's office. I could be saying that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And while I'm not, I'm not aware if they have anything annual and we can look into that. Yeah. Um, you know, when I go to conferences, there's almost always a public records or sunshine element and it's often presented mm -hmm. by someone, by Pat Gleason or someone else from the AG's office. If you all are interested in case law, I mean, I can always pass those materials. It was just you. being in that conference, being able to ask the questions like, well, I don't understand. Why would you throw that person in jail? <laughs> Talking to their fellow friend about a voting issue. I just can't imagine why, <laughs> you know. Anything else, guys? All right, let's take the main motion as amended. Uh, voice vote. Uh, Commissioner Carrison is the motion maker. Yes. Uh, yes. Vice Mayor. Commissioner Hanks. Yes. Commissioner Emmerich. Yes. And myself, yes. That passed five to zero. All righty, so now we're at uh, discussion and possible action regarding the PZAP board to the city commission. I'm not sure if I, city manager, I think this was put on by Commissioner. Since we're throwing people under the bus, the city attorney just asked if I was actually going to do anything tonight. Uh, <laughs> Good for you. So, yes, I'll introduce this item that the, the vice mayor requested be on the agenda. Vice mayor, your turn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. You, you are going to have to help me gonna... out because the technology is not working here. So those points in the backup, I can't see. All right. Well, so I can start going over some of them if you'd like. Well, let and I'm going to throw it to you in just a second. Uh, I brought up some discussion with the city manager recently in regards to, well, that quasi-judicial meeting that we went through. And we've been stumbling in several meetings over the process of when it goes from PZAB, it's written in our backup, or it's written in the resolution, or the ordinance, or the whereases, and then it comes to us, and it was just convoluted, and we, we were questioning, and what is the real date, and all of this kind of stuff. So he made me aware that these processes were pretty much done because they were given commission direction in the past. And so I talked to some of the past commissioners, and they said, yes, you know, there was some issues that came up in the past, and so 
Well, actually what it was was when PSAB would do something, um, it was basically all the options weren't laid out for the commission to see. They only presented the one option that PSAB voted for. So they said, well, we want to see everything that PSAB sees so that we as a commission can make choices of the options. So they put this process in place where everything comes back from PSAB. So what we're looking at now is no change <laughs> from when PSAB has it to when we have it. So that is how this got put on the agenda. So throw it back to you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Um, and I also have Ms. Gail House, who's our planning division manager, um, because since she's been in, in her position and recently we've installed some new software as well that I believe help provide more accountability to what we do internally. Some of them answer questions for me and for our, our departments um, so that when you get the information that you want, we have a readily available process, probably answers at least two of your bullet points. Um, so I don't know if you want to go through, there are five bullet points in your sure, item, if you go want to go through one, one at a time. time. The first one is, you know, the current process and potential changes to improve accuracy of current <coughs> of content between the PZAB and the commission hearings. Um, so if you just want a, a quick overview of how that process currently works. So are you, is this one of them that's been that changed? Your, that was your first bullet point, if you just want us to give us, um, no. The software that we have, I'll let the scale house go over some because of it. Because this is exactly, that first bullet point is exactly what I was talking about, is that there is no change. So when they come back, uh, well, even from first to second reading, there's no change. It's only in the backup. So it's that situation I was talking about. So, Ms. Scale House. You're on. Um, Good, good after, or evening. Um, Nicole Gale, House Planning Division Manager. Huh? Uh, um, so between Planning Board and Commission, um, you're correct. We used to um, make changes to the staff reports based on what uh, Planning Board recommendations were. Um, a few years ago, it was brought to my attention that there were concerns about Commission not seeing the original plan. Um, for some of these items and as a result of that conversation, it wasn't actually commission direction as a board It was just a conversation with one commissioner going through questions for an item um, We decided to implement that we would not change staff reports in between um, Planning board and commission um, Because we do want you to be able to evaluate it based on the same information what we will do is provide supplemental information or um, address changes and recommendations from the planning board in the legislative text that accompanies the item to commission. Okay, and that is in the legislative part. Yes, we so always put any, any changes or updates we put in the legislative text or we would include as an additional attachment. Okay. Um, when you make it an additional attachment, is there a way to notate that this is after PZAP meeting? Because when we're looking at it, we we don't know what was PZAP presented with compared to what we are seeing for the first time. Maybe there might be a... Yeah, we, we can absolutely do that. I honestly can't think of an instance in which we added additional documentation between those two where we do... Um, provide that type of um, change is often between first and second reading on items. And you'll see in that legislative text, we'll italicize added for second reading and we'll put, um, you know, ordinance for second reading um, in the backup information so that you have that clearly distinguished. Does anybody else have any questions on that first bullet point? Do you want to see any changes or is it okay the way <coughs> we're getting it now? Go ahead. We used to get the minutes of those PZAB meetings, actually, sometimes if they were really hot topics, they'd be verbatim, but we learned real quickly the poor clerk was going to have a stroke if we kept that up. They give us um, the draft, they give us a draft summary after each meeting. Well, I don't think in all we, the time. We haven't put that, been putting mm -hmm. that in the backup material, but we certainly could. Mm -hmm. Like the after action report? That's it, after yeah. action report, that's what it was called. I think that would be a, a great idea. I have a little bit of concern about the commission only receiving information about what your advisory board did from a party to the hearing. 
Because exactly. remember, while most of the time you guys are taking action and talking and directing the, the staff to do something, that's just part of our everyday jobs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in quasi-judicial, the staff is appearing before you as a party, just like mm -hmm. the applicant is. Oh. And so you know, the only way you're getting your information about what happened down below is from one of your parties. So now the minutes aren't going to get approved, but I mean, I don't know. No, but they would say draft on all over them. Or to do even just a verbatim of the action, maybe, mm -hmm. that comes from the clerk's office into the backup so Anything. it doesn't involve the party. Um, right. I think that would be very clean. Either way. I mean, the only reason why I thought a draft of the minutes, what we used to get, the draft of the minutes were a little bit more detailed and you saw where the discussion was leading. And then sometimes it would bring up a question that you would not have thought of um, had it not been from that testimony. Being said. Unfortunately, too, sometimes PZEB is hearing it on that Thursday and we're hearing it Tuesday. There may not be time for verbatim minutes. I like I I think well, the yeah, action I mean, report would be would be sufficient. Um, I, I, I don't know. I think at a at a minimum, if possible, and I'm not trying to put something on the clerk's mm -hmm. office that's not possible, but it would be ideal at a minimum to have the verbatim action, mm -hmm. you know, because that's mm -hmm. their actual recommendation to right. you. And if you want more, and if they could provide more, you know, I, I don't know about that. But. Well, there, there's nothing that says you can't go back and watch the meeting if you choose to. Also, if you have questions about the action, I would assume as long as it's disclosed, right? Well, if you see in the after action something that perks your ears, you can go back to that video. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, that PSAB was three hours, and so to prep for last Monday's meeting, I listened to a three hour when mm -hmm. maybe just certain points of it. So I like the after uh, action coming from the clerk. Another during, thing, and I guess this really isn't about PISA, it might be more about the quasi-judicial, is that remember in your, I loved how you put the staff report, the staff PowerPoint together where it showed all of those 16 criterias and every time we got a quasi-judicial, which was way more often than what we get now since the code change, um, anyways, it, they would have those items literally spelled out on a sheet. And it would say, you know, that you, the approver, approval or denial is based off of these 16 criterias. And it was one sheet that came with every single um, quasi judicial. We are hearing. working to develop um, templates for motions and, and every option. Do you want to approve? Do you want to approve with conditions or waivers? Mm -hmm. Do you want to deny um, so that you have the correct language mm -hmm. and that you make the correct legal findings so that it can be right. su hopefully supported on appeal? So we have that for a few types of, of items that we've done lately and we're working to kind of um, create some templates overall so that the advisory board liaison can use that for the PSAB, and the clerk can use it for the uh, commission. Currently, those have been going into your staff summer, or your, um, like your cheat sheet, whatever you yeah. call this. Your cheat suggested cheat motion sheet. Right now. Unless you're on Zoom and you can't find it. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to try a different method, but that's sort of what, what in our office, what we mm -hmm. are aiming toward. Usually. No, that's what we got in the backup, too, is, but it would say specifically, this is the criteria to look for, and if you are not going to approve it, then it needs to be listed of these. I mean, it spelled it out. Well, the so. one we sent you last week that you couldn't find during the meeting was pretty. Yeah, it spelled mm -hmm. it out yeah. too. It was yeah. very, very spelled out. It was just we couldn't get it to you because you were not just there. <laughs> All right, wasn't guys. there in so many ways. No. <laughs> Is there anything else on this one? Do we need to get a consensus or a motion to? Um, well, what about the rest of them? What was that? Well, on, on on just this like first one, one at a time. I think get a consensus to have the clerk's office supply after action report to us from P after the PSAP meeting. Thank you. Uh, consensus um, by Vice Mayor Commissioner Hanks. Are you no okay? Commissioner Harrison? Yes. Commissioner Emmerich? Sure. And I am also a yes. So there's your consensus to include the PSAP verbatim action. But I'm just saying to after the a action. To after action report. Do you, do you want the action that PZAB took, the recommendation to be verbatim, or just the general action report, uh, just a report? Just an after okay. 
actually So it's not reported. verbatim. I'm yeah, sorry. I thought I heard you say that. All right. So going on to the second bullet point, city manager. Thank you, Mayor. I think the second and third one, um, when we explain what we're doing to you now, um, you'll find that we already have these in place. But the second one is ways to centralize notification, creating a mechanism to provide checks and balances and accountability for tasks. And I'm gonna, if you're okay with it, I'm gonna combine these two because I think that mm -hmm. the explanation goes with both of them. The third one is develop a record detailing the completion of the various actions and steps that are completed through the process with verification of each step. Um, this is where we have this came up because of dates. It, one one document would say one date, another one a different one, or even as far as um, uh, the the listing of the mailers, the mailers, that type of stuff. That is why that was put in. So go ahead. Yep. So I, I think you'll find um, when we try to explain, we have an, an, a software we're using now called Monday.com that I think covers all these, but Nicole has a whole lot more experience with this software than I do, so she might be able to explain those things for you. Is that the same software that we just approved something on it recently? That was another department was asking for it in their budget for next year. Okay, that's why it sounded it's, it's familiar. It's a web-based software. It's Thank you. pretty cool. <laughs> so um, this, this software program um, is relatively new for us. We've been really kind of um, getting into it for project management, it helps us in a lot of different ways in tracking different components of the planning um, division operations. And so one of the things, and 7-Eleven was actually the um, first project that we did this for from a staff report perspective. We actually detailed out every different component of that staff report, assigned it to a planner, um, and then um, put due dates in it. There's status options for it. Um, the due dates have reminders that get set to them. And then at the end, the senior planner comes in and kind of consolidates everything with one voice. Um, so we, we set all of that up in there to make sure we don't miss anything at the beginning. Um, and then for our planning board and commission meetings, we're working on um, something similar for that. And we've started it for these and we're still fine tuning that process. And I think this will really help with some of those concerns. Um, when we put an item into the board for um, the commission meeting and we assign a commission date to it. We then create a checklist within that item that has to be completed saying, you know, legal ads done, um, you know, the legislative text is complete, you know, every different item is in there. And so we've, we've, we're implementing these, these tools. Um, some of them are further along in implementation than others, but we are putting all of this together so that we don't miss anything. Does that checklist flow to all the departments? Because in a meeting, you know, quasi-judicial with planning. It's your department, attorney department, and clerk department working on all of these things. So is each department able to see that checklist to make sure that the date that's appearing is actually that date has been checked off? Uh, so currently, um, it's only available for planning staff. Um, I can give additional view access to other departments if I need to. Um, if I want to actually give them access to edit the, the software, I have to purchase additional licenses. Um, but they, we could open up view access for that. That'd be perfect, especially for the attorney's office mm -hmm. uh, to make sure all the T's have been crossed and I's dotted before they produce something. From, a, from my perspective, I can tell you this is nice because um, she doesn't trust me enough to have edit access, so I just have view access. But, that being said, I can go through and make sure and see are all these things completed. I have all the tasks are listed. You see the dates they were done, who did them, um, and when it was you know first draft, initial review. All, there's it's pretty intense, and so you have the ability to go in there and see that everything was done. Who has the ultimate check? Who goes back in at the end? Who's accountable for that project? Well, ultimately, that would be me. But uh, um, the one going through to check it is Nicole. Okay. Can I ask, um, as part of the backup materials, because legal notice for a second reading is like one of the last things that gets done, can that legal notice be attached to the backup materials? It used to be many, 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 many years ago, um, and then it kind of went away by the wayside. 
is it possible to put that again back in the backup material? That way then we can see exactly when it was done. And, and I, I don't mean you, the city clerk, <laughs> because, or whoever, um, because I know that quasi it's, you're the applicant. Um, so somehow, some way can that final legal notice for like, especially the quasi procedures be included in backup material and maybe a notation for second reading of ordinances, um, say this was read, uh, this was publicly advertised on this date in the newspaper, whichever newspaper. Is that possible to do? So we put the dates um, in, in the staff reports typically. Sometimes again, those change um, between um, planning board and commission, especially lately we've had some changes with all the COVID everything. So we've had some, some differences there. Um, <laughs> we can add that onto the, the staff, the legislative text, um, if there are changes. Um, in terms of adding anything for second reading, the clerk does those notices, so they I, we'd have to coordinate with um, the clerk's office to add the second reading ones for ordinances. Um, generally speaking, in most cases, we advertise planning board and commission for <coughs> like a special exception. We would usually advertise those on the same legal ad um, being, being run together. The only reason it, it wasn't done that way on a previous one is because we had to have the Zoom meeting information on there and it wasn't available for both. So I, I'm not really hearing. I, yeah, well, I don't have to see the ad itself as long as I know that the date mm -hmm. is given in the, in the backup. I'm fine with knowing that somebody checked that off. Mm -hmm and that it was done on this date, because that's an accountability. Mm -hmm. If we find out that it wasn't done, you have that person to go to who claimed that it was or whatever, and they're accountable. So I don't have to see a full copy of it. I believe but just Vanessa a date in the newspaper, or whatever something. newspaper, and I think city attorney wants to weigh in. She looks well, like she's chomping. Well, yeah, I just want to say, like, legally, you do need that evidence. The, the, yeah, staff, yeah. the staff doesn't Thank present you. that evidence in the hearing. Okay. Now, that doesn't mean they have to show you a copy of the ad. The evidence can be testimony. Um, but there does need to be evidence in every hearing of what the public notice requirement was and, that it, and how it was met. Can you say, can you we usually put, put it in and the And you have the copy of the paper Absolutely. and the advertisement, or the newspaper would write a certified letter stating that it was sent and that it was published on X date for X long. And I always did long. that in past in my business. Uh, it was proof. It was evidence. I always had them return a copy to me. So if that's what the commission wants, then yeah. That and uh, isn't there a neighborhood meeting requirement for certain types of for quasi uh development master plans um and rezones don't you isn't rezones no rezones do not require a neighborhood meeting they require extra additional notices but the only thing that requires a neighborhood meeting is the development master plan because it used to be that you would get literally a list of the notices that were sent out does that still hold true um we do so. not put the list of of addresses in the right. backup material um, we do, I believe, usually put a map of the buffer area. Yeah, you have a circle. That's what we had yeah. last okay. time. Yeah. It was a map. Yeah. And I remember, too, that they used to put the verbiage on the postcard or in the letter as part of the backup. This is what they sent to those residences within that quarter mile. Um, oh, the notice. Yeah. They'd give you the notice, the copy of the notice, yeah. Yeah, it's typically the same language. We usually try to do the postcard. Every once in a while, we get you know three items on one, and we can't fit it on a postcard, so we'll do mailers. But but you should send people. that notice off. <laughs> See, I, the applicant always had to send the notice off. Right. They have to now pay for it. They pay for it, but you send it. Okay, all right, all right. Um, I like that. That way, then it's guaranteed and, it went. And out. I've seen mm -hmm. the list of the names who attended the meeting, comments. It's on the back. Yeah, yeah. all that yeah. sort of stuff too. You want to get a consensus to have them start putting back the legal notices? Um, it, we, we do include them. I just went back and checked last Monday, and it, it's in there. I think it's also important for the board to remember, in this capacity, the city is a party before you. Right. And you, it, it's whoever. really not within your purview to require them to bring something specific to you at the hearing. Now, if you're at the hearing and you don't have what you feel like you need to see, then you can make that decision in the hearing. 
So I think the conversation and letting them know what you'd like to see is appropriate. I'm not sure it's appropriate for you to direct a, what a party will be bringing before you in a quasi-judicial proceeding. I just would like to know what date legal notices have been sent for like second readings because if, if I, I'll just send that email every single time until say, well, hey, we when was this? Time. The more appropriate way would be to ask the question in the quasi-judicial hearing. So but I'm talking about process. second reading of just regular ordinances. Oh, that's... That's not part of the quasi yeah. I'm not talking about there's they're they're the same but they're separate if there's well they're different one is evidence before you in a quasi judicial hearing correct you know the other is just a requirement of any ordinance that comes before the board it's a 10 day notice which is done between first and second reading right and you theoretically you don't have to have two readings it's just that this board chooses to have the two readings you have to have two readings of an ordinance, well, yeah, but you don't have to have two yeah. quasi-judicial hearings. Right. No, I was that talking about correct. the ordinances. Our code even specifically tells us which one is a quasi-judicial hearing, but it's... Yeah, no, it's not quasi-judicial. The ordinances, or maybe it's the... Res no, the ordinances, ordinances you don't have to have two. hearings under state law. No, under state. only have one hearing. That might be what you're thinking. All right, does anybody else have anything on the, these two items that we kind of put together? So... Nonsense. Yeah. Especially with city attorney uh, stating that staff is a party in quasi judicial. Who is the accountability go to for the legal notices? I mean, I would think because there's three departments working at this, there's one person that's accountable for making sure that those notices are done in the checklist. Who does that fall to if staff's supposed to be a party? Great question. Or if planning is supposed to be a party, is that part of that decision to the making? Office? That's part of the 16 obligations of making that decision in the quasi judicial. It was one that it was advertised correctly, right? Uh, Wasn't that? But I would think you have in quasi judicial, especially, you have one person who's responsible for making sure the legal notices are done. And city attorney just stated that planning staff is a party in quasi-judicial, so Who should doesn't? it fall to them to be putting in the legal notices or should it be falling to the clerk's office? I think these are the only notices that, that one of my departments sends out. I think the other notices, like you're talking about second reading for ordinances, all come from the clerk. Um, that's why I was just asking the attorney is, should we be sending those out, or should they should they be like other notices? Personally, myself, I think narrowing it down to one office being responsible for all notices is a little less cumbersome. And you're not looking around at who did this, who did that, who didn't do this or that. You've got one person or one office to handle it. That's my take on it. It's my understanding all the planning notices get sent out by planning department, but then they're sending out quasi stuff, which you're already an applicant to, so you really shouldn't be based on what city attorney is saying. Is a party, that correct? Not an applicant, but yeah. They're, they're a party. Not right. A, yeah. They're a party being not the yeah. applicant, but. That, that's just sorry. Have you had time to stew this over, city attorney? I've never seen, I've never worked with a city where. All the cities I've worked with before, their city clerk or city secretary issued all the notices mm -hmm. for the entity. I've never seen where some notices were issued from a department, or in this case, a division. Um, but that's my experience. I, I'm not sure what Heather's experience might be as a clerk. I know in Venice, the planning department does their notices for, for the planning and zoning board. And then once they're complete, they send a transmittal to the city clerk's office that has all the information from the planning board and then lets the, the clerk's office know, you know, when it's gonna go in front of the council up there and then I knew when to advertise it based off of the transmittal that they sent me. So they did their planning and I did all council notices up there. So they did PZAB yeah. and you did commission. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what we do as well. Yeah. We just, if we're doing one for PZAB and we know the commission date, 
we'll put it on there so we right. don't have to run and pay for two ads. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's part of the backup, right? I mean, you get the copy of the ad and when it was advertised and all that as part of the backup, which goes to the clerk, which the clerk then reviews and all that good stuff. Well, see, that, that that's, that's what, to me, there needs to be an accountability. It's fine and dandy that they do their own submittals and then add to it the date for the commission, but they're handling PSAB. If the clerk's office is handling commissions, she should be able to view that to make sure that the ad that they're putting in oh, yeah. includes the commission date. So she still has the authority over to say, yes, that's done. We have to get the clerk's signature before we can send yeah. something to the paper. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. I'm aware of that. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to bullet number four, city manager. Next one is whether staff should be making recommendation on items or simply providing options for consideration. I thought that was a legal issue. If I remember back in the day, because staff used to make recommendations. They still do. We still do. Oh. Wasn't that and a debate of some sort? And see, I find it difficult it when they give I a could. recommendation to the board telling us which way they feel is the correct way. Um, I, I like personally myself the, issue back in the, the way the way the county and some of the other governments do. They furnish options, and then tell you the bad, the the pros good, yeah, you know, the pros and cons to it. If you know, if you put these conditions with it, you know, this would work or wouldn't work or whatever. Giving options instead of recommendations. Um, I believe the city attorney will probably speak differently to this, but in that quasi-judicial, um, <clears throat> staff is making a recommendation to the commission who is sitting in that more of a judge type of thing. They're a party, mm -hmm. and they're actually recommending the judge to do something. Um, and if the commission doesn't see it the same way, <coughs> it looks like the commission is violating because the staff already said that blah, blah, blah. I thought it was the part, well, I, I know that so, this came up like probably 12 years ago, 13 years ago about staff recommendations. And I think that's how it went to the SDR process where they had the staff development review committee review everything and make their recommendations or observations. And I'm pretty sure that's what happened. So when you're getting the recommendations and observations, it was from the SDR, not the planning department. Just even in this I'm last just, This is years ago when this all shifted, though. I don't know. Maybe the city attorney knows case is there any case I, law? I don't know anything about the history, but I would say they are a party before the commission, mm -hmm. and they have the right to bring, to bring whatever evidence to the hearing that they want to, and they have the right to advocate. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong, again, with you all saying, hey, this is our preference. Sometimes this could put us in a tight spot. Um, but, you know, they, they have the right to do that. In fact, based on what action the decision maker makes, you know, the city staff can even have a right of appeal. So they are, I mean, they're a full party. They're not there that in, in a quasi-judicial as your staff, the way they are your staff in the last, all the items we talked about tonight. They're there as a party before the decision maker. They have the right to advocate. So, you know, if they want to, to change to options and pros and cons, um, they can. But if they want to make a recommendation, well, I, don't, I'm talking I don't think about you can direct them any differently. I'm talking about not just quasi-judicial. I mean, there's recommendations comes with everything to us. And I personally like options better than recommendations, um, the pros and cons. But that is the way I view it and think it. Go ahead, well, city manager. I think that there's certain areas that yeah. you have a professional staff for a reason. Um, and as do I. Um, I do not, I am not an engineer. I'm not a planner. Um, 
you know, let, let's face it, we all know where my background comes from, but ultimately I'm here to have people in certain areas that are certainly way smarter than I'll ever be, and then bring you those professional recommendations based on what our code says, what we think is in the best interest of moving forward, and we do a very good job, I think, and certainly work hard towards it, mm -hmm. of making those recommendations, um, and you all have heard me say it time and again, to give you the pros and the cons of no matter which recommendation is being made, is so that when you do or do not take a recommendation that we make, you know what the consequences are, both pro and, and con. So if we bring you a recommendation, it's gonna be, here's the 10 things, and our staff summary is literally set up, designed to do that. There's a recommended action, yeah. there's all of the background, and there's a financial impact in there as well so that you know what's the cost of that decision. And sometimes there's a cost of a different decision as well, right. which we try to make sure you have also. Um, See, and then you I get two scenarios that... just like tonight where it was, I know you kind of had a split vote, it was three to two, but the point was of the item back on the road and drainage district was no matter what you want to do, if you want more information, there's a cost to that too. It wasn't stated so that you would make a specific direction. It was made, the statement that I made was so that you'd know that in order to get that more information was also going to have an impact. In that case, mm -hmm. it was a financial one and a time one. So our goal, I can tell you my goal from staff presenting you stuff, whether it be in this scenario or not, is so that you have all of the information and we make the best recommendation and we'll tell you what we think is the best option, but ultimately the commission gets to make all of these decisions, whether it be quasi-judicial or not, we come to you and I think there's been very rarely have I come to you where you didn't really have a choice. Um, we try not to do those, but sometimes those happen. Like you really have to do this or else it's gonna be really bad consequences. I find the staff report is it, not only does it give the recommendation, but it gives you all of the evidence that you need to determine how you came to that recommendation. And you can either choose to believe it or approve it or use it or do what you want with it, but that staff report is huge. Um, and, and sometimes it's really the only thing you have to look at. Well, one of the um, things I really liked in this last one, and we all know how the last one turned out, but you had the 16 criteria, and one by that's one. What I said that was yep, one. I think that was a great statement. One fantastic. by one, it was spelled out. Here's criteria <clears throat> number one. Here's how we think it is or is not met. Mm -hmm. And as you'll notice, again, it, we keep using that one because that's our most recent one, but I think it's a great example anyway. Is PZAB made a recommendation, staff had a recommendation, the applicant had a recommendation, and at the end of the day, you didn't take any of them. And, and that's allowed, that's why you are where you are. But for staff not to tell you that, I think would leave you with two recommendations. And there was a third one, and ultimately you all made a fourth. But they tell you what the recommendation is and why. And they also give the other options too. Mm -hmm. uh, in the in the staff report, uh, you know, they recommend, but <coughs> alternative, I think you call it alternative, options uh, you list you know in case of denial blah 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 like that uh, this again I spoke with past commission and uh, it was brought up to me about the recommendations and how it gives the perception or the appearance that staff is just telling commission what to do and they're rubber stamping something the guy's that's name in the pet I know right <laughs> <laughs> Who are you talking to that's a past commissioner I think your most recent action proves that clearly you don't do that okay. but on top of that you know there's also the possibility that we could communicate that that this is staff's recommendation <clears throat> you know there could be I don't know some kind of opening statement or something done that clearly states like I said in this last one you had multiple recommendations of ways to go and at the end of the day, the commission made an additional one, um, which not only does it prove you guys don't rubber stamp things, but it proves that you listened to the whole thing and at the end of the day, did what you thought needed to be done. And it was different than what anybody else thought she needed to be done. Stop sucking it. It's all right, the emails are already coming in. <laughs> all right, so. 
Are we finished with that item? Yeah. Anybody I know. okay with that? Okay. Um, one left. So the last one, method to convey law. Mm -hmm. well, I'll let you finish it, city manager. <laughs> A method to convey the involvement of the PZAB within an ordinance or resolution versus mentioned in the legislative text of the agenda item staff summary. I think we just addressed that. That, that came up just recently, and there were two ordinances. One gave when PSAB and what they said, and the other one just gave when they met. Correct. And so to keep everything consistent, um, I figured we probably need to have a discussion to see which way. Personally, mm -hmm. I lean just strictly to saying PSAB met on blah, blah, blah day. The backup material to me staff report tells you what they decided. I don't think that needs to be in the ordinance to satisfy the statute. It just needs to show that they met. And that way they stay consistent. And that's exactly what had happened when at a recent meeting where it said that one, one ordinance said they just met. The other ordinance said they met and this was their recommendation. Um, I am on the opposite side of the thing because people look at the ordinances as historical documents, uh, the whereas clauses, and, or even in the, the text of it. Um, so it gives the history that this is what PZAB said, so you don't have to go to another document to try and find, well, what did PZAB say about this, this hearing? Um, so I, I'm more towards, yeah, put all the information in the actual ordinance, but that's, that's me. It, it's not I, required by statute. I Just personally think that. what city attorney came up with is the the summary of action from PZAB, and I'm sure it'll have a date and time and all that. It's sufficient, honestly. Do you want the the recommendation? I think the question is in you mean the, notated in the ordinance. In the is ordinance what, is what your problem was, and I don't think it's necessary, but if it's legally required, then yeah, but I don't feel it's necessary. It's, it's not uh, legally required, and the official document of the meeting is the minutes. You know, they just recommend approval or denial. That's That would be pretty easy to put in the whereas, but if they recommend approval with three conditions and four waivers, you know, that's going to get... <laughs> Yo. <coughs> no COVID. That's get pretty... Pretty laborious. Second round. Does anyone want to sit next to me? No. <laughs> I like that. Where's, where's Chief <laughs> Titus in his mask? Deal over here. All right. So, <laughs> seeing that there's a little bit of a differing of an opinion, um, and it's uh, basically our policy if we want it included or not in the ordinance slash resolution. Um, well, PSAB doesn't do resolutions, do they, City Attorney? Yeah, the special exceptions were resolutions okay. under our code. Thank you. So do we want to have, and we'll get a consensus, to have PZAB's recommendation included in the resolution or ordinance that comes to commission for approval? Is that captured? You're, you're asking for the full disclosure of what they said. The recommendation to be included yeah. in well, the that, ordinance. Well, that is the resolution. opposite of what I presented. Exactly. I mean, that is what you stated. That's what I so stated for a consensus. Whichever way you go, it's going to be a yes or a no. Right. <laughs> so. I'm a no. I mean, I don't <laughs> think that much. A, that, thank you. I don't think all that needs to be in there. It's just going to be part, part of the backup. It's part right. of the backup. <laughs> Statute only states sure that you have to have it the meeting. No. Commissioner Armour? No. Okay. So well, we, we got it cleared. That's, and there's no question now. And that's why we do this this way. Be consistent. So it's, it's consistent. Now the city attorney knows it's not going to be included, the recommendation from here on out. Because I also remember the city attorney saying, well, we don't do it in others. And I went, oh, yes, we do. <laughs> so, um, not all of us. Cons consistency, <laughs> consistency is is what we were looking for, and and that's what we've got now. So thank you. Um, anything else, Vice <coughs> Mayor? That's it. Oh. Anybody else on this item? Okay.
Alrighty, I think we are done with that. Thank you, um, Nicole. So now, do we have any public comment, uh, City Clerk? Oh, that's sorry, right. I didn't, I didn't even use it. I'm sorry. Well, she checks. No, there's not. Thank you very much. All righty, Commission Communications, Commissioner Armich. No, thank you. Commissioner Carousel. Mm -mm. Commissioner Hanks. No, ma'am. Vice Mayor. One. Mm -hmm. uh, finding out that the city owns the property on the corner of 41 and Sumter, where the... Um, Little craft fairs and stuff. Yeah, the craft fairs go. Do we also own the property where the old Sable Trace sign was? So. Somebody's saying no. no Just so. where the little vendors. With knowing that, why don't we allow food trucks to sit there? I didn't. I mean, when we found areas for them to go to, uh, I didn't realize we own that property. But that's an excellent place for food trucks to be able to be visible. I think there's a lot of places beyond what we allowed them that yeah. could be. I mean. That was reduced well, because of permission. I mentioned that, and I was told I was with you. All private properties can allow it. So yeah, private property can allow it, but, but I think so. I specifically was mentioning these purposes here. Yeah, but we put up. certain parks and stuff where we said that they could go to. Yeah, up to four. Yeah, I was yeah but it's very restrictive, and it's not all parks, and it's not all city property, and it's, right. I mean, right. I... But I would like to see this property added to that list so that they have great visibility out on 41. I think you should add a lot more than just that property. So oh, let's... That one I didn't know about. Shall it be brought forward as an agenda item? I will be more than happy. Yeah, let's do it again. Oh, guys, 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 one at a time, Vice Mayor. <laughs> Do we bring it forward as an agenda item to discuss? Are you looking for consensus? Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's it. And just to add to that. I'd love to do that again. Just to add to that, I think the reason we kept it specific locations was kind of like a pilot program to see how it worked. And then we would open it up. And I remember us saying, hey, we'll bring it back and add more as we see that this is working okay. So, Commissioner Emmerich. The only thing I would want to add to that is maybe maybe go down and, and look at the property when you have time because it's really not an improved. It's it's like a lot of grass areas. And when you're if you're going to park the food trucks, you're going to want them on solid ground, and that may take away from parking. I'm not against it. I'm just saying let's look at all the aspects of that area because you don't want rainy season and then tow trucks coming to pull out the food trucks. Go on Hillsboro and Cranberry. There's yeah. plenty of areas, absolutely. But I'm just saying, just just be weary where 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 we let them go. That's all. I'm I'm for it, but let's look at it and talk about it. <laughs> we have our consensus, City Manager. We're already working on a change to that ordinance because state law changed since you passed it. So uh -huh. as much. you're going to be having something come in front of you anyway. Okay. Good or bad? How about Boring. a heads up? I think it's more moderate. Didn't change the law. I don't know. We'll find out. I'll okay. Um, can I get some information, if I may, uh, Mayor? Can we get the information, maybe um, even a small map that shows where they're allowed and the criteria in which they're allowed so that we have an overall summary of what exists? For backup? Right. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Is it? And did you in, in include other property. properties too? Yeah. I think we have a map of city properties. Right. That's you why do. I wasn't really putting it out. Well, I just didn't know. Well, it, you know, it'd be good if if on the same map we saw the dots where we currently have it compared to where we don't. I think you're right. You know, have, so, you know, have it all on the same map. We'll just put it on the current map of do city. Do an overlay. Dots. Yeah, exactly. An overlay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Be good. All right. Vice Mayor, you still got anything else, or is that oh, just yeah, your one? Just that one. Okay, and excellent. Actually, I, I don't have anything, so thank you. Um, city <laughs> Manager. I'm good, thank you. City Attorney. I've spoken enough. What? <laughs> 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 All right, City Clerk. No, thank you. 
The gods right. have rained down from heaven. Everybody else? Anybody else? It is 8.40 and we are adjourned. Thank you.